Hello, I'm Benwin Bronzebottom, celebrity dwarf and video game enthusiast, and this is my sidekick, Crowy. Hello. Quiet, you. I'm here to tell everyone about Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. It's a Dungeons & Dragons-based strategy game from Codename Entertainment. It's a management game with an emphasis on formation strategy, where you assemble parties of legendary heroes and send them on adventures through the Forgotten Realms. Heroes? <laughs> Crowy, don't you mean champions? Players unlock legendary champions of the Forgotten Realms, like Dritz Duerden and the Companions of the Hall, Farida and Havilar from the Brimstone Angels saga, and many more. Assemble the best adventuring party possible based on your formation options, champion abilities, and the obstacles and enemies you face. Or just smash your mouse button repeatedly like I do and hope for the best. Each champion has an incredible array of skills and items to let you customize your style and play even further. Farther. Farther means more distant. Further is figurative. Well, I meant more distant, but figuratively. That's further. Well, customize your style even further. Because Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms is available on all your favorite gaming platforms. Steam for PC and Mac, Web, Epic Game Store, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch, iOS tablets, and Android devices. Well, let me know when it comes to the BlackBerry. I'm not giving up that phone. It's the only keyboard I can use. I hear it's coming to the smart fridge next spring. In the frozen mountains of the north, you have come to end the terror of the Grim Fang King and his army of raiders. The biting wind has slowed your pace as you approach the mountain hold. The air is painful to breathe, the snow thick and unyielding. You draw close. Distant torches lighting the icy ground a rank order fills your nostrils. The shouts of orcs fill your ears. Great beasts roar and slam against their bonds. You ready your weapons and prepare your attack. Battle is about to commence. Epic encounters. Turn your RPG up to 11. We have done it. And make videos or even earn money with your game. Tabletopia is a full-scale ecosystem for publishing digital versions of board games. But of course, the main focus of our project is to allow players around the world to play remotely with their friends or find worthy opponents here. And we are speaking about literally thousands of games and their variations. Many leading publishers and game authors have joined us already. And from day one, you will be able to... Hello, and welcome to the Black Dice Society Session Point Five here at GaryCon Gaxmore this year. Uh, it is our pleasure to be able to debut our little game for you here today. Uh, going forward, we will, of course, be on the official D&D YouTube and Twitch channels. Now, a uh, word of warning before we get into this a little further. Uh, we are playing Ravenloft, and Ravenloft is a horror game. So even though we will be PG-13 today, there's going to be some subject matter and content that comes up perhaps over this session and over subsequent sessions that you might not usually encounter uh, in a D&D &D setting. So uh, again, I've talked to the cast. I know what their uh, lines and veils are. We have a system of uh, X's to let me know if we're going too far in one direction or the other. But I would just like to warn you up front there might be some troubling content that comes up over the course of this story. 
And uh, with that being said, uh, of course, to be smooth and uneventfully, uh, let us meet our players. Uh, and I'm going to go in the in the order in which you all are here on my stream screen. I can talk and start with Tanya. Hello, I'm Tanya, also known as Cypher of Tear over online. And today I will be playing Fen, a dump here drow who is also a blood hunter. She's out for a little bit of revenge. Mr. Mark Mir. Hello, I'm Mark Mir. I do voices in video games, and I am also a very big fan of Ravenloft ever since the original module that came out in the 80s. So I'm looking very forward to visiting the domains of dread as Brother Uriah Micawber, cleric of the grave, deity Ezra, Lady of the Mists. Nora. Hello, I'm Nora, aka Nora Logical, and uh, I will be playing Nahara who is a reborn fallen Azamar warlock. Uh, Sage. Hi, I'm Sage Ryan. I go by not Sage everywhere on the internet. And tonight I will be Valen, Valentine, almost couldn't say my own name, uh, a reborn aberrant mind sorcerer. Becca. Hey, I'm Becca Scott, but today you call me Tatiana. Tatiana is Ergenazi, but barbarian is all you need to know. And last, but certainly not least, DJ. Oh, hi, I'm DJ Knight, Twitch streamer. I, was, I play a lot of video games very badly and try to have a good time. I'm playing Desmond. He is a human ranger who uh, has a lot of fun and is a little uh, weird, which I think that works for me. Now, with that being said, today we will actually be playing the introductory adventure from the upcoming Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, known as the Houses of Lament. So you may see me leaning a little more heavily on the book than you might be accustomed to when I'm running games. But we figured it's Gary Khan. This is our debut. We might as well share something a little special with you. Uh, with that being said, one last little note of housekeeping for my players here. Those of you who have not put your character names in the Zoom in your Zoom name, please do so. And we are about to dive in. You find yourself on a disused trail overgrown by weeds and the roots of a spindly trees. A light drizzle begins to fall as you travel. As you approach a wooded crossroads, the leaden rain makes the cloaked form standing there seem all more unreal. Desmond, when you see this figure standing in the dark room and in the rain, what do you do? I'm being curious about this figure, but pensive about approaching. How does Tatiana react when she sees such a thing? Tatiana grabs hold of her kukri. She looks to her liege lady, Valentine, to make sure she's not scared. When you look, Valentine is not there. <sighs> I, I frantically look around. I search the woods. As you look there around, is. There is nothing but darkness and mist around you. Valentine, you also find yourself standing alone on a road with a shadowy figure up ahead in the rain staring at you. I stare back. Nahara, how do you react to this vision? Uh, Nahara's just trying to get her, her footing and her wits about her. Being not quite sure how she came to be with the party in the begin to begin with, um, pretty apprehensive about approaching this person. As you look around, Nahara, there is no party. You are alone. Ah, okay. Missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do I see anybody around me? 
you just see this one robed figure standing up ahead in the rain, staring at you. This, this is not, this is not right. This is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not where I'm supposed to be. Who, excuse me, where am I? Finn, Mm. you also find yourself alone in the darkness on a winding road confronted by this person standing ominously alone in the rain. Hmm. I tilt my head and stare at them and I reach for my sword. Identify when, yourself. When you tilt your head, you see the figure tilts its head back at you and you see a pair of piercing yellow eyes light up underneath the hood. Hmm. Can you speak? Brother Uriah, you are also presented with the same scene, alone in the middle of nowhere, with no memory of how you got here, actually. You remember traveling, and now you're here, confronted with this form. Brother Uriah shakes his head for a moment and looks towards the figure. Forgive me, sir or madam, I I fear you have me at a disadvantage. I do not recall how I came to be here. Do, do you require assistance? All of you, in your own ways and in your own places, looking at this person, alternatively staring back defiantly, some of you brandishing weapons, some of you with confusion, the figure's head snaps up, glaring with piercing yellow eyes. What you took for a cloak spreads around it, revealing itself to be a pair of mighty black wings. With one powerful motion and a blast of chill air, the wings sweep and the vague figure is gone. Hmm. I'm just trying to remember, what was the last thing that I could remember? Nahara, all of this seems strange to you. Your body seems unfamiliar, like when you put on a heavy coat and you become aware of the weight of it for a moment. And as you think back, you just remember silence and death. I shall clutch my holy symbol and whisper a prayer to Ezra, still scanning the forest for more of these figures. Trying to recall, I was was on the road to Il Aluk. I was to meet with... It's... I can't remember. Tatiana... Give me a perception check with advantage. You are nothing if not dedicated. No, even with advantage, both are threes, and that is not good. Valentine, you also give me perception with advantage. You realize Tatiana is usually never far away. That is an 18. Valentine... You aren't sure if your eyes are simply adjusting to the darkness and gloom out here or if the landscape is actually changing somewhat. You see the ambient mist that is floating around you seems to have retracted slightly and you make out five other forms, all that seem to be convening at a crossroads one of which is very familiar, the tall, muscular form of Tatiana, looking about frantically in the darkness, brandishing her weapon. I'd like to make a telepathic link with Tatiana, if she's within 30 feet. Uh, She would be close enough to, yes. She seems not to see you, but you can Mm -hmm. reach her. Yeah, I'll just say, Tatiana? You're able to speak back. My lady. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? What has happened? I I am worried for you. Are you safe? I'm okay. And I don't know. Uh, A figure, a strange figure. I feel it will come to attack. I'll proceed towards them. 
all of you sort of notice this beautiful red-haired woman sort of coming out of the mist ahead of you, and you become aware of the fact that you're surrounded by more people. What does Valentine look like? Valentine is uh, about 5'7", and she is always overdressed. She's wearing a long black gown that kind of dips down in the front and um, a, a pair of pearls across her neck. And she has very, very full, long, red, bright, bright red hair um, and more makeup on than one would describe in a fantasy game at most times. <laughs> Presumably, uh, Tatiana rushes forward towards her lady. What does Tatiana look like? Tatiana is very tall, six feet, five inches. Is uh, rippling with muscle uh, and white hair, hence the wig. Blue skin. That's, that's a wig? I know, you'd never believe it. Uh, she holds a kukri in her left hand and flowing blue white skirts beneath some light armor. She, she's uh, never one for fabric to get in the way of her movement. And she moves gracefully like a dancer despite her size. It must have something to do with the fact that she is an air genasi and so um, her, her tether to the earth is light. Desmond. You are aware of these strangers sort of all convening at this crossroads. But those two you've seen before, <laughs> they move in similar circles as you do back home. The other three are strangers. Kind of leans toward the two he knows and you two I'm aware of. Them I don't know. Do you know how we got here? And what does Desmond look like? Desmond is wearing his wolf to wolf's tooth necklace. He never takes it off for any reason. Uh, he's wearing a brownish jacket that has shoulder pauldrons and kind of like flowing black pants. He's wearing a sword at his waist and he's got a bow kind of just attached to his back, ready to go. Valentine and Tatiana. Yes, you recognize this man. In fact, somewhere in the back of your mind, he's, you expected to see him, but it's on the tip of your tongue. It's like when you wake from a dream and it's so real for just a moment until you try and wrap it in words and it's gone almost immediately. It's, you were expecting his face, but not here, not like this. Where do you come from? Desmond. I can't put, I can't put a word to it, but I, it's, it's home. When I think of home, somehow your, your, your faces are familiar to me. Yours as well. Duh. Perhaps we've crossed paths at a party. <laughs> that. That seems right. I no, I, I've soiree. seen you fight. I have a vision of you fighting. <laughs> we do fight a lot in my family, so that that works. I spend a lot of time in the forest. That I can appreciate. People can be a bit much. I somehow remember you also tussling on occasion. I am none to do, yes, mistress. Most certainly. I keep my hands clean. Thank you very much for that. Brother play. Uriah, make me a either perception or religion check. That is a dirty 20. This place is strange, Brother Uriah, and these people are strange. Something about most of them seems to put your hair on end. 
but you find your eyes drawn to the warrior who is holding her sword and has yet to say anything yet. Her face seems familiar to you. She's an elf of some sort. And these lands, do I recognize them as Darkon? Or have the mists risen and taken me elsewhere? It's very difficult to say it could be Darkon. You just see hills, trees, paths, but this road, this crossroads in particular, is unknown to you. I shall approach the group. Hail, gentlefolk. I fear I find myself lost. And what does Brother Uriah look like? Brother Uriah is very tall, exceedingly thin. Though he is bundled in a heavy coat and armor, you can tell by his gait that perhaps a stiff wind might blow him over. He wears a perpetual look of concern, perhaps even fear on himself on his face as his eyes dart about finding the deeper recesses of the forest and peering into them trying to determine what lies there when you were just pondering whether or not you were in darkon was that something you said out loud or was this more you just thinking to yourself i shall as i approach the group tell me do you know is this the road to ilaluk am i still in darkon Finn in Nahara, give me either history or survival checks. Ooh. I rolled oh, an I don't 18. Like that. <laughs> oh, the dice are not my favorite. Uh, 13 on a history. Uh, an 18 on survival. 13 in 18. When he says, Ilaluk. Uh, Finn, that means something to you, but you're like, no, we're very far from there. Mm. You don't know where you are, but you're like, no, we, we can't be anywhere near there. Nahara, when he says that, you know that is a place you should not go. Just certain, that word. You're like, that is a place I should not set foot in. Why, why would you, why would you want to go there? There is word of a plague that has broken out in the lower quarters. My order seeks to aid the suffering of those afflicted. I can tell you we're not there. And I can tell you, I don't see why you would want to go, though I feel your, your reasoning is honorable, but I wouldn't advise, it is, I would advise against it. It is a wicked place, but good people dwell there. I'd just like to know where we are now, quite simply. Would you like to look around? I would. Well, uh, yes. All of you can give me perception checks. 15. 15. Six. 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 21. 21. In natural 20. Natural 20. So this is a good point for, for me as well. For me to say, I only play with one house rule, which is uh, a 20 always succeeds and a one always fails, even on skill checks. And as you all are looking around here, um, what was that that you said you got, Desmond? I was trying to roll the die for perception and it doesn't seem to like me mm, you might have to refresh it uh, it zones out on occasion or you can feel free to roll uh physical dice if you prefer i realized mine was a nat 20 because i oh, didn't know that there's a plus one for okay natural 20 as well eh mm -hmm. perfect mm. um tatiana in nahara actually i will tell you in a moment what you two perceive Brother Uriah and Valentine, as you sort of survey these six strange people, um, survey arrayed around you here, um, 
you discover something. On the ground where this hooded figure was standing a second ago, you find six very large black feathers, like almost the size of a short sword large, like larger than any bird could have left behind. And you also find a small planchette, which is a metal um, triangular object with a circle in the middle, and there's words etched in it. You see there's letters and yes and no, and it is decorated with bird skulls. Both Valentine and Brother Uriah, you both immediately recognize this can be used to commune with the spirits of the departed. Valentine, you've hosted many such parties for bored nobility that want to uh, attempt to speak to their ancestors. Certainly. Brother Uriah, of course, you realize that it is a way to commune with the spirits of the dead, but whether or not you should disturb them in their rest or whether or not you can accurately call upon who you wish, that can be more difficult. I do not approve of such things. I communion, will communion with it. the dead. While he's speaking, I touch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, wait, wait. Uh, um, it is cold because it's been out here in, in the rain and, and in the chill night air. But as you pick it up, you don't, it's well made, but it doesn't feel um, in any way special other than that. It doesn't tingle. It doesn't resonate. Of course, it doesn't harm you. Hmm. It's just a thing. I'm going to place is it, it mistress? Back down. Well, it would appear it's a device to commune with the dead, which doesn't seem coincidental in being here. Would be unlikely that whatever was here just accidentally dropped their planchette. Please, good lady, I, I beg you, show some care. Such things are not to be trifled with. Oh, I promise you, I care deeply about the dead. Uh, still, it is... Tell me, did you all see a figure at this very spot? Yes, it's, it glared at me with yellow eyes and it would not speak. Duh, perhaps if we find it, we should fight with it. It does not seem like its intentions are good. Hmm. I like well, you. If it was hostile, though, wouldn't it have been violent towards us? I don't see why we should re jump to such. Perhaps it merely seeks to toy with us. It is always safest to assume the worst in these lands. Or perhaps it left us a gift. It appears it has. I think the you think I get the, the feeling whatever from gift. that creature? Religion, man. W what do you mean of these lands are bad? I know not nothing of this place. Tatiana, the moment you say that, well, two things. This planchette was located exactly where this thing was standing. There's a pile of six black feathers in this on that exact spot. The second thing. With that natural 20 for Nahara and Tatiana, the moment you say out loud, what is this place? The mists seem to pick up for a moment in part. In Nahara and Tatiana, it is just the two of you standing there. And you hear a woman's voice howling with rage. Traitors! They did not come to my father's banner. They turned from mine. But we will have Castle Levents. We will conquer them. We will break this warlord. And we will have what is ours. Yes! And you see 12 men arrayed around her. And they look haggard and exhausted. They're wearing heavy armor, but it is soaked with mud and blood. It is cracked and dented. You can see where each of them have scarred up faces and wounds that haven't properly healed. And they're like, yeah, onward to the vents. 
and she walks over and pushes one of them and he sort of stumbles and falls and she goes ah i just need your fortitude to hold until the dawn and victory will be ours onward onward and they ah, ah, onward onward and they turn and they start to run. And at that moment, the two of you, Nahara and Tatiana, see them charging a castle, but the mist parts slightly for all of you. And you see a light further down a path that you didn't recognize mere moments before. I just put my, my hand on Tatiana's forearm. Just, did you see that? Duh, we see the same thing. It is noble warriors. They have many battle scars, but they will not win again. And what do you, what do you think of this other path? As I, as we look at towards the, the lighted path ahead. And now, although the rest of you did not see the vision of the army, you all see the light. Mm. Mistress, this way, you see? Uh, what do you think? I know not whether it's safer to stand here in the middle of scary road or go towards one source of light. Mm. Maybe. Uh, go ahead, please. No, I was going to ask, is both of you does this seem natural to you? Well, granted where we are. Oh. None of this seems natural. <laughs> what brought us here? Unnatural. And where is here? Tell me, where do you hail from? What are your names? My, uh, in the, in the beginning, my, my wings had been kind of cloaked around me in my confusion, but um, my confusion should not be confused for, for, um, for cowardice. And I'm being that I'd already died and that was my last memory. I'm just kind of unfurl, stretch out my wings a bit. I say, I don't, I don't know how I got here. Um, something about the mists in this land seem familiar, but I can't, I can't recall. I, I only recall my name. I'm Nahara. Uh, and all I know is that all I've seen is the visions of my my own death. I don't know how that's possible, but, or how I'm here, but I don't know how I got here. And the rest of you, do, does anyone recall how they found themselves here? I'll extend out a hand and just go, Valentine. Uh, uh, Uriah. At Uriah's name, Fen kind of tilts her head and stares at him. Something about him is tickling the back of her mind, but she can't quite figure out why he looks familiar. What does Finn look like, by the way? Fen is a tall elf, um, however she is. Grayish purple. Um, side shave. Her locks are white with purple tips. And she's wearing a long coat and some armor, brandishing a, a long sword in her hand currently. And her eyes are also a interesting shade of purple that matches her hair because why not accessorize? And when she smiles, you see the hint of fangs. And she's looking at Uriah very curiously despite the fact that we're all standing in this road and we don't know what just happened. Uriah's also looking back at her. You, uh, do I know you? It's all, everything is so foggy. I, this light, do you think it's safe to go towards it? 
Well, it's better than standing here. Perhaps not. There are foul things that lurk in the darkness and mist who lure travelers to their deaths and worse. In for the record, what does um, Nahara look like? Nahara's tall. She's about 5'10". She has long, flowy, curly black locks, uh, white eyes that seem like they're glowing from the inside. Uh, she unfurls to reveal large black feathered wings. Um, she's wearing light armor in red and gold uh, with some black fabric here and there, uh, but mostly red and gold. Um, and there's something about her that's, you can tell that she is very confused, but there is a very fearless nature about her. Nahara, you immediately recognize those feathers that were left on the ground, all six of them are much bigger than yours. The rest of you saw a winged person with black wings take off, and there's another person with black wings. <laughs> but you, Nahara, know they're not the same. Can I pick one up just to hold mm -hmm. for a little size perspective? Like I said, there's six of them. There's almost as if there's one for each of you. Um, do, I, 20, by the way, do I notice I finally anything figured out about perception. Ah, Dirty 20 or natural 20? Net. Uh, then I'm going to say you also witnessed the same vision that Nahara and Tatiana did of the army um, charging towards the house. So you would have perceived that that Finn, Valentine, and Brother Uriah did not. Um, Nahara, um, they're similar, but they're about 30% larger than yours. Um, give me perception with advantage. Because okay. just because you know about your feathers does not necessarily mean you know about uh, <laughs> every okay. other kind of bird out there. I rolled a 16 and a 15. Okay. Um, is that with your bonuses and whatnot? Uh, yes, so I was so yeah. 16. Uh, I did mention, fail to mention the, the gold coronal headdress, but y'all see it. Yeah. <laughs> but for I the, mean, for the people listening, yeah, and not watching, that's, that's also there. It's true. For the people listening, you're really missing out on how beautiful all of these humans are also. Um, Nahara, if you had to wager a guess, you don't know what kind of creature this would have come from. You saw it with your own eyes. But if you had to guess, especially based on the fact that the feathers are larger than yours, that this is something much lighter than you are and probably much faster than you are. But larger. The what feathers are larger. The it was so difficult to make out the figure. It was hard. It was mm. far away. It's raining. It's dark. So you see much faster. And mm -hmm. what was the other one? Lighter. Much Probably lighter. Phys yeah, physically not as heavy as you, but much faster than you are. I'm saying this all out loud to myself in thought, but everyone is able to hear me say it. Is a relative of yours, perhaps faster, stronger, lighter brother? No, no, it's it's much different from from my own. I, I can I can't tell what this is from exactly. I pick up another from the ground and hold it up to Nahara. Then I look to Valentine and nod. I'll pick one up because Tatiana did. Mm-hmm. One up because I want one. <laughs> it is um again, it's dark out here, but it is uh it is very shiny. You notice um the clouds part momentarily to show the moon is a sliver in the sky and it just immediately reflects almost like it's lit up by the moonlight and then the clouds go back over and it's just a nice feather i have not introduced myself to everyone tatiana is my name and i think i can trust each of you 
You have my sworn protection. And she kneels on one knee and puts her kukri across her chest. Oh, thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Has everyone taken a feather except for Uriah? And Fen has not picked one up. Uriah looks at the last two on the ground and then looks at Fen and says, I mislike this, but perhaps we must play the hand we are dealt, as they say. Hmm. And Fen picks one up and kind of twiddles it between her fingers. Uriah will pick up the last one very gingerly. Yeah. Uriah, give me a religion check and you can make this with advantage. That is either a 15 or it's a 15. And Finn, yes, you can give me Arcana also. There's a chance that you would know this as well. All right. Oh, I'm so glad I get advantage on this. <laughs> oh, yes. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. And what was it for Uriah? 15. 15. Um, both of you can't quite put your fingers on it, but this Uriah, it makes you feel safe. It's, it's positive. Like some, something about this is, is a good thing in Finn. You feel like it's, it's, it's a friend, whatever that was, not only did it not mean you any harm, it meant to help somehow. I'll relate okay. that to the rest of the group. I think our absent friend does not mean us harm, perhaps even seeks to help us. Hmm. Then why did he not speak or it? Perhaps it cannot. Ah. Uh, there is a something Winged lady and I see, we saw soldiers going towards light. Uh, there was battle there or there will be. I know not what I saw. Do you understand what we see? Nahara? A vision. Did I understand? Did I, was any of that familiar to me? Like any of the people, any of the surroundings? Nope. Like, I wish I could tell you, but. Actually, oh. on, a, on a natural 20, um, I will let in, and even though Tatiana, they were from a land far different from yours, um, their arms and armor seem antiquated somehow. You definitely felt like you were seeing into the distant past. Do I get that as well? Yes, yes. Okay. Actually, well, I'll let you decide, Desmond. Would you like to have perceived that after all, or would you like to bank that 20? to see something coming up. Oh, I, don't, I don't think I'd rather see something coming up. Like, because <laughs> right. I'd already it. given it away by then. So perfect. Oh, oh, well, well, look at, oh, thank you much. Right. Yeah, we'll keep one in your back pocket there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, Nahara and Tal, you just feel it was the past. Beyond that, the the names, the, 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 the heraldry, all unfamiliar. So the significance of it, but None of that, I, I, I'm not familiar, but it's not something that's, that's happened anywhere recently, but it must be significant in some way. Valentine, did I hear you say that you put the planchette back down again? Uh, yeah, my intentions were to kind of set it back on the ground and see if I could feel anything from it. As you lean to put it back down, you know, careful not to get mud on your extravagant gown. Always. Something in the back of your mind says, keep it, child. It was a gift. It was a gift. All right. And I'll kind of tuck it away. Just to be it, certain. And you all very much would have seen her kind of like going down pause and just throw it in reverse yeah out loud i said ah oh, it was a gift pardon the planchette it was a gift yes hmm. just uh, just for my own peace of mind 
you are all not dead, are you? <coughs> dead? <laughs> Brother Uriah was taking a sip from his wineskin at that moment. There's a spit take. <coughs> dead? What? Whatever do you mean? Well, yes, I, I also just... feel that way. <laughs> Does look dead to you? And I, I want to that... lift Valentine over my head and <laughs> show my muscles. Mm. Oh, mm, sorry, okay, that's, um, that's, that's a hard yes, no. Thank you, Tasha. Okay. That's a hard no. Um, the, the reason why I ask is, uh, well, my, my death is the last thing that I remember. Your death? Brother Uriah immediately uses eyes of the grave. I'm just looking at my hands. What does eyes of the grave allow you to perceive, Brother Uriah? Well, let me tell you. As an action, you know the location of any undead within 60 feet of you. So you get a complicated <laughs> um, answer. <laughs> Both Valentine, Nahara, and Finn all ping for you, oh. but faintly. Uh. Uh. Like there is an air of death about them, but they themselves are not necessarily dead. Brother Uriah looks as though he's about to be absolutely terrified and then isn't sure if he should be. But I, I don't, I don't understand. Please, please, uh, what, what are you? That's so, rude. Uh, death, I agree. Death clings to you, though you are not, not undead as far as I can tell. It's complicated. Do you, do you mean to kill me? Is, is that it? Have I been lured here to be slain? No, I look at Tatiana. to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> are we, are we not? Okay, all right. Haven't given a reason. Give the word, I will. Do I kill? Please don't. Right. I, I, I only ask because if that's, if, if I had died, and I'm somehow not dead anymore, and you've never died, then what is this place? I do not. Brother Uriah looks down at himself with his eyes at the grave. Is he, is he registering as undead? <laughs> nope. Um, it's, uh, it's, again, there is, Brother Uriah, there is an ambient unease to this place. Um, you being where you're from are accustomed to it somewhat, but this is worse somehow. There, there is a pressure here and it's pulling you in the direction of that light at the crossroads. And again, Valentine, Nahara and Finn register for you, but you, Tatiana and Desmond do not. Hmm. Hmm. What of the, the house itself? As I look towards it, am I detecting any undead presence? When you look towards the house in sort of your holy symbol and concentrate for a moment, the mists begin to part for all of you. And gradually the haze and the brush give way, revealing a bald hilltop. There stands a grim black tower, the last defiant turret of a long crumbled fortress. Attached to this tower is a three-story manor house, weather beaten and veined with ivy. A porch girds the house, its sagging roof sheltering a stout front door that stands open and emits a flickering light. Nahara and Tatiana, that tower was on the fortress. You all saw this army charging, but it was a full fortress before. Now there's just this one piece of it with a house built into it. It's pathetic. No army still stands. They must have lost... Uh, yeah, well, that might be good for us. Mm. Perhaps we get some answers. Not really I can set up camp army. anywhere. Ooh. What was that, Valentine? I said I'm not terribly looking to encounter an army today. Neither am I. Nor I. I would not mind. That's fair. Uh, I'm, I'm not particularly in the mood to fight all those dudes, but I mean... If they want to tussle, I just want to understand what's going on. And uh, I don't like this place at all. 
can I just like, I just flex just to see if I'm still as strong as I remember being, if I do remember? Um, I flex instinctively as I see you flex. <laughs> We're pose now. Off, be a pose off at the, at the crossroads there. Um, Nahara, as you sort of um, flex your muscles for a moment and look down, um, you tell me, is this the power you recall or is it greater or less? I feel very weakened. Something's not right. And I, and I will just say to Tatiana, I promise you I was stronger than this once. No, to her arms are string beans, Tatiana. Like, she absolutely does not work with her hands. Yeah, I see that. You once, uh, you have makings of a very strong woman. I mean, I'm not wearing armor for nothing, like light armor, but, you know, it served a purpose once, I think. Okay, we'll come back. And I slap her on the back Ooh, it's in a just chummy way. Hurts a bit, <laughs> but I mm. shake it off a little <laughs> Desmond just kind of flexes to himself, just like, I mean, are we out here? Are we just showing off right now? Like, just looking around confused, like. <laughs> like, is that what we're doing today? Right. Is, 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 could, is it could party time? Like, direct me towards the right? house. Is the house over there or is it over <laughs> there? Like, which. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, Fen is just like tapping her, her sword on her shoulder, like, so what are we going to do? And she, she also keeps looking at Brother Uriah. And then she gives him a very intentional, full fang smile. <sighs> he seems very unnerved by this, perhaps more than you were intending. Uh, <laughs> and he he grasps his holy symbol and he doesn't present it, but he backs up. Oh, come now, if I was going to bite you, I would have done so by now. Beside, you're, you're more of a snack than a meal. You're safe. I worry less for my life than my immortal soul. Please, mm. please do. I, I only ask that you allow me to complete my mission before. Before what? Well, uh, you seem to intend me harm. And then she just, she looks at him and she just kind of really just deeply stares at him. I'm pretty sure that we've met before and I didn't kill you then. You do seem very familiar, but it's, it's hard to remember. I, the everything is, do that. Everything's been so foggy since I got here. Shall we, shall we move towards this structure then? After you, well, my friend. Oh, I, I shall not take the lead, if you don't mind. And when he says that, Desmond kind of looks at him with bangs out and just like, nah, please, uh. after you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Desmond did not have the... the, the Desmond uh, did not pop to you, but he does have these, like, partial fangs in his mouth. Uh, you see Uriah uncork one of his uh, holy water <laughs> vials and is sort of sp spreading it about a little bit. He's not Back actually up. using... He doesn't seem to be using too much of it because he seems to want to conserve it. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, by all means. Uh, off to you. I, I will you... take lead if everyone is afraid. I'll follow yeah. Tatiana. And I'll follow them. I'll follow afterwards, but I'll say that when Fen, when Fen says says her whole thing, I it's something about Fen intrigues me, and I I, I smile a bit. And uh, as we move forward, I say, "Well, I've I've died already once, so what's the worst that can happen, right?" Hmm. I find saying that in the mist can lead to trouble, my new friend if I can call you that. Well, that's why I didn't say it so loudly, just between us. <laughs> well, I'm saying it just <laughs> uh, Valentine, were you going to say something there? No, if I didn't hear it, then I just keep walking. Okay. Um, important point of clarification that will not at all come up later. I know Tatiana and Desmond are going in at the front. Who's going last? I was actually wanting to pull up in the rear. Are you going to go last if Tatiana's yeah, in the front? If Tatiana's in the going yeah. in the front, he's he can tell she can okay. fight, and he wanted to pull the rear just to be safe in the back. Perfect, excellent. He's a fan of the forest, so he's actually I'm surprisingly comfortable. 
I'm thinking because he is now terrified of the other four party members, uh, Uriah is probably sticking fairly close to Tatiana. Also, <laughs> she said that she would protect him. So he's probably second. Excellent. Excellent. So the you two at the front, him in the back, um, Finn, Nahara, and Valentine arranged in the middle. I, I yeah. feel like Valentine would probably try and be right in the middle for maximum protection. Is that a, a fair assessment? Yes. Valentine is also just never in a rush. So she's just kind of leisurely in the middle. <laughs> uh, she strikes a, she's a, a very striking contrast to this cold, dank, desolate area. She is beautiful and vibrant and dressed up like with finery that would fit in in the houses of lords and ladies in countless halls and countless lands. It's almost like a, discarded work of art out here in the midst of the rest of this desolation as you all move along. And as you walk towards the house, you do hear, no, 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 my darling. Please, please be careful. It is quite irreplaceable. Don't you think I know that? Father taught me just like he taught you. Yes, 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 yes. But if we get any of this damaged or broken, the working, the seance, it will not function properly and all will be lost. <sighs> You worry too much, Jennifer. It's going to be fine. Ah, oh, dear. Coming from up in the direction of the house. Again, you might recall in Through the Wonders of Technology, I've sent you all a, a picture of this house to our group chat so you can see exactly what it looks like. Right. Um, it is a fancy house in a terrible sort of dilapidated horror sort of way. Um, mm. <laughs> and in front, you do see two young women. Uh, they are probably in their early 20s. Um, they look a lot alike. Um, to a casual observer, they might even be twins. Um, but one of them uh, unmistakably has the bearing of a scientist. She's got a pair of spectacles on. She's wearing long robes, and she has a number of vials sort of tucked into an, uh, a leather apron that you realize would give her some protection and has a short sword hanging from her belt and is very much pleading with her sister, who is dressed more like what you all immediately recognize as a warrior. She's wearing chain link. Um, she also has some of these vials and things on her, but far less than the other one does. And she's in the process of hoisting up like a wooden box of some sort that her sister is like pleading with her to be careful with. And she's like, nope, it will be fine. Ah. And they both turn and look at you and they go, oh, oh, well, hello. Do you Greetings. need some assistance with this box? The... One holding it is like, nah, I got it. And she goes, yes, yes, please, 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 please. Save my sister from herself, please, please, yes. I go and, aid her. And there are, um, give me a perception check, Tatiana. I will let you tell me, is Tatiana the sort of woman that would know anything about um, scientific equipment or, or mystical gadgets? Nah, that's a seven. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's not her bag. It could be anything, but it look it looks uh, it looks heavy, and it's a chance to show off, Tatiana. Uh, uh, give give me a strength check with advantage, Tatiana. In D and D Beyond, you right click on it and choose advantage for the record. Oh, oh nice! You know uh, I yeah, think I made it. thank I got you an for the heads up there. there it is. Well, mm. still roll it anyway because you might get a twenty. You never know. I got a nineteen. Hey. Uh, you all see Tatiana, there's a steamer trunk that is probably big enough that Valentine could fit in it. And Tatiana just leans down, dip, grip, and rip like it's nothing. And you see <laughs> the one that is holding it looks at you and just goes, hmm, um, thank you, stranger. I am, um, Laurie Weathermay Foxgrove, and this is my sister Jennifer. Well, you're, you're the Weathermay Foxgroves? Oh, you've heard of us. Delightful. I've read, I've read your book. <gasps> he read the book. And you see the one holding it goes, ah, oh, again with the book. I told you the book would come in handy. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. What is your name, good sir? Uh, and brother, you... brother Uriah Micawber uh, of the Church of Ezra. And you see it is Jennifer that comes forward to greet you so warmly while uh, Laurie just sort of looks at you, Tatiana, and it's like, eh, 
after me. Uh, come, 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 come. And heads into the house. He's good. Uh, you see, she turns and looks at you and goes, um, you all uh, strangers, uh, did you come to um, investigate the House of Lament as well? Or are you simply misplaced in the mist? The, the second house one. Of... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually uh, not sure. From whence do you mm-hmm. hail? Dark we are Darkhan? You can't be from Darkhan. We're in Borka, man. Borka? Where? Where did I get to Borka? It's a, just, just down the road. So we're, we're just outside Sturban. Uh, I fear the mists have spirited me here. Finn, uh, yes. Bor- Borka is a place you've traveled to. You've probably ranged farther and further than anyone else here. In fact, you absolutely mm-hmm. have. Uh, again, Borka should be very, very, very far from where you are. S- I'm, I'm sorry, Borka. Yes, Sturban, to be precise. Uh, oh, I know, I know. I've, I've been around. Hmm. And I look at Brother Uriah, and I look at everyone else. We're very far from where we should be. Very, very far. We were heading to Koshmar. Is that in the general vicinity? Uh, Koshmar. I- do not know of a Koshma, but if you're displaced, you could come and um, stay with us in Sturban until you get your bearings. It is very easy to get lost. The mist um, oftentimes send you where they wish you to be, not where you wish to go. Oh, do I know that? <laughs> well, doesn't mm-hmm. seem like I was headed anywhere, but this is as good a place as any. Uh, well, um, uh, well, uh, brother Uriah, it's it's very very nice to meet you. Yes, as my as my sister said, I I am um uh, Jennifer uh, Foxgrove. Um, in my my sister there um is um Laurie Foxgrove, Weathermay Foxgrove. We are, and um <clears throat> we are <laughs> monster hunters. Um, and she does like very much like kind of stiffen up a little bit with pride when she says that they're monster hunters. Oh, what? That's when he kind of perks you... up at the end, just kind of like raises his eyebrow a little bit like, okay. I just, I lower my wings <laughs> back down to like protect me in a cloak, you know, cloaky way. And I'm just like, what do you, what do you consider monsters? Desmond, when you sort of react like that, you see just out of nowhere, her head just snaps and looks at you for a second. And she says, what is your name, good sir? My name is Desmond. It's a pleasure. And from whence do you hail? Are you from Darkon as well? I'm from Koshmar. I, I should mention at this juncture that I have only just met all of these people. Oh, he's just nervous. He thinks we're going to eat him or something. Mm. You see, as she's looking at you, she sort of takes out a vial of green liquid and she pops the cork on it and she just drinks it with a very slight tremor. And she says, ah, hmm, <clears throat> yeah, yes, Mr. Desmond, I, I believe we might, um, <clears throat> my sister and I might have a word with you later if, um, if, if you are so inclined. Oh, if you want to have words, um, I'm right here. Please do. See, she like looks at you for a second and her eyes very much turn to the rest of you and she goes, perhaps later. Okay, I'm here, I'm, I'm ready when you are. Um, Tatiana. Kind of like laughs a little bit, like just right as he says, I'm ready when you are, just, <laughs> and she kind of like backs up a little bit. Tatiana, um, well, here outside of right where you all can see is a porch that is creaky and covered in dead vines and infested with earwigs, but it otherwise seems unremarkable. Uh, Tatiana, you realize that the house, the door is open and inside peeling wallpaper and a musty scent clings to the walls of this spacious foyer. A curving staircase rises from the cracked tile floor to a balcony above, keeping its distance from a darkened chandelier. Doors lead in every direction, and at the room's center, a bronze sculpture of an antlered eagle perches atop a marble pedestal. But she continues walking 
into the next room, uh, into the parlor, where dozens of faded portraits cover the parlor's walls and the subject's eyes fixed on a circular table that bears an ornate spirit board. A wide mirror hangs over a tall fireplace set in the north wall. And she puts the box down and she looks at you and she says, hmm, and um, what's your story then? Um, in your name. Again, I, I'm Laurie Weathermay Foxgrove. And she reaches to shake your hand. Uh, yes, I grasp her hand with two of mine and shake it heartily. Uh, uh, it, it might hurt a little. Tatiana, I was a gladiator. No more. I fight honorably for family, win them much prestige. When now family is gone. When you go to shake her hand, you realize she squeezes it back just as hard uh ah. like yeah and she it's... just smiles at you and she goes i do not know this da but um very pleased to meet you is powerful hand you have <laughs> oh yes in our line of work uh, one has to be strong you know um we can't always be the most clever but if uh, we are diligent we can be the strongest right Perhaps you try to speak to dead. Is that what is? Uh, yes, it's my sister's idea, really. Um, we are here to purge this place. Um, but, um, she wishes to attempt to contact them first. And, um, I'm more here to see, um, should it go poorly, as many of my dear sister's experiments tend to, I shall be prepared. And she taps the longsword that is on her hip. Uh, I understand. The drive to protect can be strong. It gives purpose, yes? She looks at you and she says, absolutely. You know, I so rarely encounter anyone that has the same mm, zest for life and, and duty that I do. Well met, Tatiana. Well met indeed. The met, well, yes, I call it rage, but with channeling can direct it for good. Yes, quite, quite. Uh, at that moment, unless anyone does anything differently, um, Jennifer does lead you all into the same parlor through pet, the porch in the main hall into this parlor as well. Certainly. I'd yeah. like to um, just telepathic message Desmond mm -hmm. um, and just go, so what was that about, friend? And Desmond, Desmond just you, like, you hear a voice in your head that sounds yeah, he's like, just like... He's looking around like, the f is going on? And just, <laughs> just like... <clears throat> what? And he's just like, tries to take a second and just listens and just like watches the people around him. And just looking for eyes to see if somebody like else heard. I don't look. Voice. And he's just like, okay. Uh... Sounded Doesn't like there sound was... like anything to me. Maybe I'll just this continue. Place is just crazy. <laughs> Sounded yeah. like there was an interesting conversation awaiting you. And then he's, he's just like, okay, just, this is weird. <laughs> and he's just thinking like, what is this? I can hear that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, you hear him thinking it. Well, it's a friendly conversation, a curiosity. That's all. And he just like kind of just looks around like, okay. It's one of these. So he's, so he just thinks, I like friendly conversations. What was what all about? Oh, back there with the pre presumably host of this place seemed particularly interested in you. Uh, I might uh, just think it might have something to do with uh, a little bit of a curse I picked up a while back, but it's not really that big a deal. I just find it interesting when people want to hunt monsters and don't have the understanding of what's in their presence. Fascinating. Right? So. I mean, he just kind of like looks around to see if anybody like moved at all during that. So he knows who he's talking to. And like before the silence ends, like, all right, who is this? Like, how are you talking to me right now? Just keep walking. Valentine. I'm not disguising my voice or anything, but. Right. Okay, cool. Valentine, <laughs> you can, you can give me either performance or deception with advantage because you <laughs> this is not your first time pulling this and desmond you can give me perception cool 
That's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. I got a 12. No. No. Man, you're looking around. You're like, I, I swear that was Valentine's mm -hmm. name, but you know, she's looking at art and yeah. mm. cool. Mm. <laughs> he just kind of shrugs it off. Like, all right, cool. As you is weird. all are walking in, Jennifer is like, yes, this is a legendarily haunted house. Uh, the site of a number of tragedies and strange disappearances. And my sister are here to, and I are here to cleanse it. Um, we're going to perform a bit of a seance to see if we can perhaps connect with some of the lost souls here and might help them uh, gain liberation. You all are welcome to join us, of course. I would you know, love to. It, it, it's, Splendid. It, it's funny, we, we discovered a planchette uh, just in the road. That's right. What great fortune! We actually have a spirit board and I seem to have misplaced mine. Oh, perhaps you dropped it on your way here? No, I don't drop things, sir. Oh, um, of course, of course, I, I do. Uh, don't mean to suggest, yes. Miss Miss Weathermay Foxgrove. I, I don't mean to cast aspersions, but I am not entirely sure that my traveling companions are can all be. Um, uh, well, uh, I'm I'm seeing some very odd things. Sit, religion man, and I plop him in a chair. <laughs> oh, not you, gonna... not you. I trust you. Oh, oh, oh. I, I was going to ask, and I hear it. Well, uh, hang on a second be before <laughs> this happens. She leans in very close to you, and she says, I did not wish to be rude, sir, but I do have some concerns about that strapping fellow over there. Do you know his providence by chance? There is something about him that makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. I, I am not, I'm sure he is a perfectly pleasant fellow, but he, he did, uh, has, has a rather pointy smile. Hmm. Yes, that might prove to be a problem later, but um, I suppose for the time being, um, he has availed himself in a gentlemanly manner, and I don't know his capabilities or those of his associates, but um, fear not. Um, it was a Brother Uriah, you say, yes? Yes, yes, big fan. Big fan of your work. Oh, well, then you should know, just like I wrote in the book, there is a solution to everything if we can simply be clever enough to, figure, enough it to figure it out. Yes, I remember have read the book. Oh, yes, yes. I have read the book. You are the most <laughs> delightful of fellows. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And she does, um, you see, she turns and she looks at Desmond and you see she takes that same green vial again, Brother Uriah, and takes like another hit off of it and like tucks it back and puts it back in her robe. And she goes, <clears throat> well, uh, one tragedy at a time, I suppose. Um, how would you like to assist in our seance, Brother Uriah? And, and, and in fact, and then she does raise her voice now where everyone can hear. How would you all like to participate in our seance? I feel with so many powerful personages here, the spirits are far more likely to reply. Oh, whatever assistance <laughs> I can offer, I, I might call the blessings of Ezra down upon us to, to make our task easier. <gasps> the lady of this manor was a very fervent worshiper of Ezra in her life before her strange and untimely disappearance. Of course, I've been told somewhere in here is a, a shrine to her. Um, oh, um, Jennifer, Jennifer, have we the maps? Jennifer, the maps. And you see, she looks at you, Tatiana. She goes, I love my sister dearly. I do. I do. Hmm. And she opens one of the boxes and she does pull out a very large map and put it on the table, which is the map I have provided all of you which does show this sprawling three-story uh, house. Uh, and apparently there are some basement levels as well. She taps those and she's like, we've yet to find a way to gain entry to those, but we were simply setting up for the seance when you all arrived, so. Duh, I must warn you, any spirits that you can contact, they are weak because they could not have fulfillment in life and pass on. Or I take offense to that, back. but don't say anything. <laughs> I just kind of literally ruffle my feathers at that. <laughs> <laughs> when you hey, say that, on? Jennifer does look at you, Tatiana, and she goes, oh, no, 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 my darling. There are a number of ways that a soul could become uh, trapped and unable to move on, oftentimes through no fault of their own. Um, you should pity the dead. Um, don't excuse me? Them in. When you say excuse me, and every everybody kind of looks at her, 
the entire house creaks everything goes like and you hear a rumble of thunder outside and the rain gets distinctly louder <clears throat> that makes fen kind of look around and then look at these two women what exactly have you been up to here you see uh jennifer with her spectacle, she like clicks down a couple of other lenses and is looking around. And you see um, Laurie just kind of puts her hand on her sword and her eyes kind of narrow. She goes- I pull my sword. We were just about to get started here. We had not even settled upon which of the spirits of the house we were going to attempt to summon. Perhaps you brave strangers might be able to assist us in this. We have three options. There is the knight, the mother, and the warlord. Knight is powerful and strong, yes, a warrior. Uh, mother mm. is nurturing and kind. Warlord. Hmm. A warlord does sound fun. Do like knights. I feel like nothing good can come of, I just feel like we're gonna be betrayed in some way if we choose mother. I choose war. Hmm. I'm gonna put a pin in that to revisit with you later. Um, would, would you say that Jennifer does look at you and through her spectacle, her eyes are much bigger and she goes, yes, quite, that was a loaded statement. Mm -hmm. mm, and one we don't mm. have time to address right now. Certainly not. Mm. Well, it seems like at least three of you were saying the warlord that was and my sister's choice, of course, um, I thought she would pick the knight. And when she says, I thought she would pick the knight, she says, mm, yes, but should this warlord manifest, uh, I would have words with him. And she just taps the hilt sword and kind of smiles at you, Tatiana. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but warlord does sound like the scariest one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we choose it, good sir. That is why. Oh. oh. You will be safe. Hmm. They have not flesh to pierce you. Yet. And you see uh, Jennifer oh. leans over and says something to her sister, who immediately turns and regards you very sharply as well, Desmond. Before now, she hadn't until her sister says something to her. She looks at you for a moment. And she says, in you, sir. Yes. You said knight, but your associates seem to be choosing the warlord. What is your opinion on this matter? I like knights. It's that easy. Warlords are nice. They wreck everything they want. Knights stand for something. Warlords yes, just want to kill what people. what manner Although of person? Yes, what manner of person would lose control and wreck everything hmm i have no idea you see um jennifer um looks and she says um i was told you all located a planchette um i seem to have misplaced mine i would like to minor illusion a planchette but that does not have the same defined markings and doesn't look exactly like it. And just this. She looks at it and she goes, oh yes, quite. But, um, and she goes out to touch it. And of course her hand goes right through it. And she goes, oh. Is that what it looked like? Hmm. Um, no. Um, mine was quite different, actually. It was um, silver, polished. It was a gift from my mother. Um, but again, it seems to have perhaps not made the trip. And she turns and looks at Jennifer and she goes, you do all the packing, I do all the moving, and also the slaying. And she oh. goes, um, hmm. I'll pull out the actual one. Hmm. She looks at it and she goes, oh, curious. Um, all of you give me perception checks. What she described, that looked like the one we had seen, right? No, what she described was quite different. Oh, interesting. Because I was I was doing a minor illusion that looked different from everything as trickery. 
like mm -hmm. no she said no it's not it's not the thing you minor illusioned and what she described is not the Still one not. you found interesting mm -mm. and we're doing what was the check yep. yeah perception, perception. Yes. i got a nat i got a nat 20 with a 21 overall excellent five 15 15 15 five perfect uh 12, i'm distracted 12 you are in the middle of something uh brother uriah uh, I'm just so excited to have met a celebrity, that, <laughs> an author that I've read. So I, I rolled a 10. <laughs> and Tatiana? Perception is not my thing. I roll mine. <laughs> uh, Nahara, while everybody just seems to kind of be looking at the map, talking about this setup, meeting these celebrities, you're looking at the paintings that are on the wall, these cracked and faded portraits. And you see many of them are wearing a mark that looks like a raven's head in profile. Uh, it is, these portraits are definitely from across time. They're in different styles, uh, but it is on all of them. And you also notice in the background of a number of these portraits with that natural 20, a number of them have those hooded yellow-eyed figures in the background. Now, for the markings that with the raven that you'd mentioned in profile, mm -hmm. would that match the vision that we saw earlier? The hooded individual is there. The mark is not the same. Not the same as the army that we saw. Uh, no, they would not have been bearing that mark. Okay. Um, who is the who is closest to me? That could be within earshot, but not everybody. Uh, I would say probably Finn, because Desmond was talking to one of the sisters. So was Uriah. Tatiana and, and Valentine were dealing with the planchette uh, with Jennifer. I would say Finn would be the, the one that would be unencumbered currently. So I, I gently nudge Finn and say, like, point out to one of the paintings that looks like the figure that I saw when I first got here. Does that look familiar to you? And Fen looks up. Ah, that is it. Same yellow eyes. Yes. Once it's pointed out to you, you are certain it's the same. Mm, definitely. Can Fen do an arcana check on these paintings? You can, but this time just, just sh straight arcana. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get an advantage on it regardless. So oh, okay. The joys. And that was a net 20, so I'm just gonna keep that. Hey. That's true. You you can't top that. 24. Um, even with that natural 20, as you find your mind starts to race with the possibilities here, it is almost like something is being kept from you, but you are certain again that these are the faces of friends, that that mark is positive, that they are clearly long dead, but that the faces in these paintings would not have been, um, would not have been enemies. Mm. Are they human faces? Yes, they're all humans. Hmm. I, I relay that to Nahara. I don't know about you, but they don't strike me as those that would have attacked us or been problems. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. Um, we should tell the others. But I, between you and I, I kind of hesitate to mention anything in front of the sisters. Oh, the same. I don't like the way that they're salivating over Desmond. Don't you think it's odd that they were just about to set this board game and they needed a planchette and we just so happened to come upon it? Oh, not odd at all. I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. And that's pretty far. All right. Well, I will keep, I'll keep an eye out and I'm sure you will do the same. Mm. If there's anything, I don't trust any of this. Um... So quick out of character question. Mm -hmm. The green vial that the sister keeps sipping from, mm -hmm. would that be some, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is as a player, mm -hmm. 
but as a character, would Fen recognize it or have an idea of what it could be? Uh, is there any reason that um, Fen would have any particular alchemical knowledge? Um, in her work with her, her un, yet unnamed profession. In her day job. Uh, in her day job, <laughs> yes. Her, her not freelance gig. Um, she would, and she would have also come across other folks like Desmond and had reason to, to be alchemically prepared should a fight break out. Uh, I will give you an arcana check to see if you recognize. Okay. okay. I'm so glad I get advantage. <laughs> That's so much better. 22. Um... You definitely catch a hint of the scent of Wolfsbane in whatever she's drinking. Mm. I will uh, be sure to tell Desmond as soon as I get a chance to either pull him aside or uh, go over and whisper in his ear. He's, he's taller than me. So <laughs> even though I'm tall for an elf, he's still <laughs> taller than me. Speaking of, Brother Uriah, are you brandishing your shield? Uh, you are muted, good sir. It's a large triangular shield, so it's quite apparent. And the same symbol is on the uh, holy symbol on my neck. Mm -hmm. And what does that holy symbol look like? Uh, the kite shield is a uh, long sword uh, held point down, and lying across it is a sprig of belladonna. Mm -hmm. Spain. Or wolfsbane. Uh, for those of you that uh, might have a vested interest in wolfsbane, you know exactly what that is on his shield. <laughs> Uh, you see Jennifer finishes setting the table. She puts the planchette down in the middle. Um, uh, might I have a volunteer? I am um, not afraid. I was about to say, I feel like Valentine would be the first one to be like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Absolutely. <laughs> we, do, we doing some weird spirit stuff. <laughs> I'll step up. She looks at you and she says, I find this goes better when it's not my sister and I. Sometimes we unconsciously um, oppose each other, even though we don't mean to. Certainly. So uh, what can I see in front of me? It is, at the risk of being meta, a large Ouija board. It's a nice. spirit board. Excellent. Uh, on it, there are uh, random letters strewn out. There's a yes, there's a no. Um, there are other, some other distinct images that are carved into it as well, uh, which I'm going to attempt to describe without completely ruining and losing my place here. Um, I believe it's right at the end. Let's see. Yes. Um, hmm. You know what? Let me do it like this. I'm just going to show you all exactly what it looks like. Through the wonders of modern technology, I can do that, but uh, I will give it to you momentarily of exactly what it looks like. Great. I'll set the planchette oh. down on it. Uh, you see, she lights some candles and she says, we have settled upon the warlord. Um, of course, you are going to need, um, each of you will be able to ask one question. So we'll give you a moment here um, to decide uh, what it is that you would like to ask. Of course, pending what uh, your associates ask and what his answers are, you might uh, adapt your answers accordingly. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a question or two? Uh, the, history, oh, yes. the history of this house, um, it is haunted, of course, but has it, has it harmed the living? Have people come here and been destroyed by the spirits? Or Her eyes grow wide and she says... A number of souls have perished here, yes, brother. I see, I see, yes, then best we put these forces to rest. And she says, the, the, well, it was a, a great fortress, as you might be able to tell it at one point. Um, then um, once it collapsed over time and disuse, uh, the Halvrest family moved in and rebuilt the manor that you find here, but they all disappeared under unusual circumstances, and it has stood long abandoned ever since. Thank you. Yes. Um, I shall ponder my question. She stops for a moment and hang on. Let me get this um, exact thing for you here. As long as I can find uh, where it went. All right. Great. I feel like for whatever reason, that did not work. Um, she lights the candles and you all feel the a wind 
blows through the room here, and the entire house sort of creaks and moans yet again. And she says, <clears throat> we are um, calling to you. We wish you to join us here. We simply want to talk. We want to help in free you from this place. And when she says that, you see the lights on all of the candles spring up and the planchette begins to slide around on the board. Valentine, you feel it moving under your fingers, even though you're fairly certain you're not moving it and neither is she. You've done this before. You've, you're, you're used to all the tricks, something under the table. It seems like none of that is happening here. Can I ask my question now? Yes, um, please. It seems he's listening. I'll just say, who might I have the pleasure of speaking to? And believe it or not, there is actually a good place for us to take our break. <laughs> <laughs> the savagery of it. <laughs> it's, it's Dave. Are you, are you surprised? Of course. Perfection. So we will do a quick 10. Uh, it is 10 production overlords. Yes, 10. We will do a quick 10 and we will be right back and uh, jump back in here with our newly invited guest. So don't go nowhere. One spell so quick. <laughs> that is H E L P Y O U. Help you isn't much of a name. And when you say that, the planchette immediately slides over to the symbol of the sword. I look at Tatiana. I touch my kukri. <laughs> Start to draw it and point it at the board. Valentine, you hear the porch from two rooms over loudly creak and groan. And when she turns her head and looks that direction, all of you hear come from the porch. And you, and then the board moves around to you in D. E R N A T H. Is Desmond close enough to see the board? Oh, yes, you all can see this. Okay. <clears throat> underneath. Underneath. I hope you fight underneath, because obviously the sword means fight. I don't know if uh is that if this makes any sense. But I'm ready to this, fight. Let's go. I'm looking under the table. <laughs> no, the sound. Did you hear that sound too? Yes. 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 Would it be underneath wherever that was? The planchette immediately slides over to yes. Oh. I slam my finger down on the basement of the map. <laughs> this is underneath. The planchette immediately slides over to no. Underneath. Okay, well, I don't... Under the, under the porch itself, perhaps, the, the boards. It slides back to yes. Sure. This is I most never unnerving. said thinking was my strong suit. You see, Jennifer just looks up at you, Valentine, and her eyes get wide there. Um, and her sister comes forward, and she says, um... Perhaps I will stay here and protect my sister if you wish to, you strangers, go and perhaps investigate what might, what help might be waiting under the porch. I just kind of side-eye Fen at this point, like, of course. I just they wouldn't. And she, but she looks and she's like, oh, I just thought that perhaps you would wish to stay together. If you wish me to accompany you and Valentine stay, I'm more than up to whatever might be lurking in these holes. We're not leaving Valentine with you. We just met you. And Laurie says, and I would rather not leave my sister with you for the same reasons. 
If it lies. And Desmond kind of just looks and says, if this is your house and we're guests, wouldn't it make more sense that you go down there? You know this place better than we do. No, sir. This is not our house. We are visiting from nearby Borka. We have come to release the souls trapped here and vanquish the evil contained therein. Oh, this house belongs to no one. You, you're I turned vanquishing to Lori. the evil. Can't you go down there? Yeah. L- Lori is the, <sighs> the fighter? Lori's the fighter. Jennifer's the scientist. Lori's the fighter. They're twins. They're identical, but they're, yeah. Lori, uh, you disappoint me. The opportunity for battle and you should shy away. I wish to protect my sister, as I'm sure you wish to protect Lady Valentine. Although I have no preference, I can stay here or I can accompany you. Whichever you wish. And Jennifer looks down at the planchette, which is slid back to the sword, and she says, I also have no preference, but let us be about it. I don't know how much longer the spirit will communicate with us. All right, let's go. Yep. Lady Valentine, do you stay? Oh, no. We'll go together. Valentine, the moment you're just sort of like, all right, and let go. You see Lori like leaps forward and puts her hands on the planchette and says, oh, no, 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 no. We we must be careful not to break the connection. Yes. Um, are, are, are you still here? And you see the planchette slides over to yes. And she's like, good, good, good. We shall keep our guest occupied while you all um, investigate. Um, we'll try to keep an ear out. If you get into too much trouble, yell, and I shall come forthwith. I'd like to just minor illusion, just loud crashing like thunder sound on the way out. Look at me. Jennifer looks at you, Valentine, and she says, a little bit of mirth at a time like this. <laughs> How droll. <laughs> Is you all make your way again. The, the porch is through the foyer, just right back outside again. And again, it is creaking in wooden. Um, you all see, all right, um, the porch is number one on your map, by the way. Um, there is, um, you can tell that there, the porch is elevated. Uh, there are stairs that come up about, um, three feet off the ground leading into the door, but there does not appear to be an easy way in. Hmm. And Jennifer, how important it is. Oh, this Jennifer, yes, yes, she did not come with you. I forgot already. <laughs> Do you You're... think they will be angry if we break through it with our weapons? The house is abandoned, I I do yeah. not think an, another bit of damage will matter that much. If people approve, uh, or anyone does, I'm just going to take my weapon and, and shove it down through the porch and start trying to cut through it. Desmond just pulls out his sword like, okay. Oh, be Dave, uh... Dave, oh, I said, uh, <laughs> give me an attack roll, and our first attack roll of the game goes to our barbarian air genasi. All right. Noise. Strength, yeah. Uh, well, whatever your weapon is. Like literally, roll to attack it. Like you, like you'd attack anything else. It is not that the the porch can dodge. It just is uh, fairly well made and may be difficult to break through. <laughs> Got it. Let's see. <laughs> the porch is like, no. You know? <laughs> uh, Catch me. Quick, quick dodge. <clears throat> yeah, 24. Uh, and you go ahead and roll your damage. Nine. You see uh, Tatiana sort of takes a look back and, <clears throat> and smashes down. And you see she splinters it to the point that it, like, cracks all the way down, and you can nearly see through, but not quite. She has heavily smashed it, but has not burst all the way through. You left out the ferocious battle cry as she lets out the the built-up rage of not having to fight yet today. You know what? You know what? I'm going to give you an extra D6 for trying to show off in front of company here. So roll another <laughs> D6 of damage there, Tanya. Put your back into it a little, just slightly more. Oh, geez. I'll just take this first number. Oh, uh, it's a one. 
believe it or not, you only needed to get to 10. So <laughs> as she buries the kukri, you see she sort of like twists and rips it out and the plank comes loose. And you can see there is a crawl space under the porch. How big is the crawl space? Like, will Tatiana fit through and Desmond? Uh, Tatiana or Desmond, it would be tight, um, but they could make it through. Um, a, obviously, one of the more slight members of the party would have an easier go of it, but you don't know what's under there. But it would it would be claustrophobic but doable for either of your your heavier hitters to go under. The wings might make it tough as well. We yeah, are just not trying to, uh, trying to tuck them in. Not a, <sighs> okay. This might be uncomfortable. My lady, uh, it looks like it's best for you to go, but I would not ask that of you. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Brother Uriah opens his uh, valise or sorry, satchel and pulls forth you. When you it opens up, you see inside are a number of wooden stakes, a hammer, what looks like a string of garlic, uh, various bottles. He pulls one of the wooden stakes forth and it begins to glow as he casts light on it. Um, when you cast light underneath the porch, you hear and crawling noises. I, I, I oh. don't like the sound of that. No. Shall I? Hear that or just him? Oh yeah, no, all of you. I mean, he turns on the light and whatever's under there does not like the light. If I, if I were to just pop my head down real quick and let's say I like I Eldritch Blast this crawl space, would these creepy crawly things perhaps disperse? Would you like or... to? <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. What does your Fine. Eldritch Blast look like when Nahara does it? Uh, you see uh, a bright red light uh, from my hands and my eyes glow white even more. And as it just seems like it's pulling from my hand and then boom, out, like forcefully out. Uh, what color is her Eldritch Blast? Red. <laughs> you underneath. Give me an attack roll. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Oh no. That's <laughs> that's, that's a that's an eleven. She little, shoots, little baby blast. She shoots under there, and for a second there is silence. And the entire house groans. <laughs> and all of you roll initiative. Woo! Oh no. And it's okay. time to go. <laughs> now, <laughs> at the risk of being meta, uh, you all, um, this scene in particular pushes up against one of our players' lines. So I'm not going to make it quite as terrible as I would have if left to my own devices here. Good. We, re yeah. we respect that. Man. We respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Just not as terrible as it would have been. Uh, yes, it, if you it, would. It's okay. Please. Uh, it's very kind of you. Drop your initiative in chat there. Oh, son of a... Mm -hmm. We did just... The thing told us underneath, help you, uh, and we attacked it. Spicy. Yeah, in, in <laughs> retrospect, perhaps not the best, but my intentions were to, you know, clear the space. Clear the way, of course. Uh, you know, fair who's happen. to say that that was the voice of the things that are down there? Oh, that is you're true. right. But possibly. That is true. Um, so my uh, heart was in the right place. <laughs> it's, it's you know that this is that kind of game. Let me just check one thing. Um, you'll notice not one of us spoke up against it. We were like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, like, like, this yeah, all no. seems legit. She it's seems fine. to know. You all see there is silence for a second, and then from underneath you hear and exploding out of the hole, out of the porch, out of every creek and crevice is a swarm of bugs. Creepy crawlies of every manner of speaking, and they all immediately go to swarm over Nahara. 
Can I just try to try to swat them <laughs> with my wings? <laughs> yeah, you very much do. And honestly, to tell you the truth, they rolled horrifically. <laughs> so as you see this like swarm coming towards her, she does like kind of bat her wings at it slightly. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not today, Satan. As this just... carpet of insects is like streaming out of the house towards her. Mm. Uh, now, Nahara and Valentine um, uh, get tied here, but I believe Nahara has the higher dexterity. Is that true? I'm... What? Actually, I'm, I'm did fine. you see uh, mine? I've got a 17 on that. Oh, I did not. Sorry. I did not. I did not. Uh, then, actually, Brother Uriah, you are, are up next. As you see this swarm uh, blow coming out from under the house towards. Um, towards Nahara. Uh, the moment that that happens, uh, Brother Uriah sort of lets out a stifled shriek and the, uh, the stake drops out of his hand and he immediately casts Sacred Flame upon this swarm. So uh, that's a dex 13, uh, difficulty 13 dex save. The swarm is dexterous <laughs> as you... Um, <laughs> As you hit your sacred flame, you see it the, begins to part. Although I believe that's half damage on a save, correct? I think so. Uh, so yeah, that, I haven't rolled the damage yet, so that so is... A number of them get out of the way, uh, but by no means all. So yes. They, they take a total of one hit point of damage. Yes. <laughs> I, in my mind, Brother Uriah, it is almost kind of like... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, that, I think that's exactly what it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, and you do see some of the swarm uh, sizzles and pops, uh, but it is by no means halted. Uh, now, technically, what Nahara and Valentine do is going to happen simultaneously. Uh, but Nahara, uh, what do you do as you see this coming your way and Brother Uriah attempt to assist you, uh, but you very much have the swarm's attention? Uh you know, I, I, I'm just barely alive for like, what, an hour now? I'm a little rusty, but clearly somebody has called an exterminator and I'm going to try to Eldritch Blast these buggies out of the way. All right, roll your attack. And Valentine will be on deck. That's better. That's 18. Uh, uh, all right, roll your damage. Man, okay, two points. But... <laughs> I did it. Oh. I, I did something. <laughs> that is true. It all adds up. It all adds up. Same thing. You see your blast goes out and cuts through the swarm and kills a number of them, but there's still more pouring forward. Uh, is that it for Nahara? Yeah, I'm just continuing to try to swat these bugs out of my way. Out Perfect. Of my Valentine. When Valentine looks at the swarm, she just kind of steps back and her eyes go entirely blank like glossed over white uh and i'm going to uh cast arms of hadar that is a strength save from the swarm and it is to attack uh all creatures within 10 feet so i'll get i'll do my best first to step away mm -hmm. from anybody <laughs> in the party uh, the, the swarm got a big old one. So ooh. what what do the arms of Hadar do? Excellent. Uh, so that is uh, necrotic damage, and they cannot take reactions until the next turn. Uh, that'll just be nine points of damage. Perfect. Uh, again, you've killed a number of these bugs. If you, had, you all had to wager a guess, probably half of what's poured out from under the porch is already like burned and baking here between uh, the magical assault of Brother Uriah, Nahara, and Valentine. And the look of it is just kind of like an alien tendril that just kind of like comes out of the edge of her fingertips and swipes across them. You said her eyes go blank, but is her face blank as well? What does yes. Valentine look like? Just entirely gone. Tatiana, you know that look. I've seen it many times. Uh, and I believe it is um, your turn, Tatiana. Uh, this is not something I am equipped for. My talents are in smashing. And my weapon is useless against these bugs, so perhaps I rip my skirts uh, one layer and I try and capture as many as possible. <laughs> You're muted. 
yes, you can do that. But also, you can attack with your weapon. It's just you will just kill as many as you can, essentially, when swinging with your sword. Okay. They, so, they, they, are, they are not innately immune to your weapon, even though it's uh, a swarm coming through. I, I wrap my skirt around uh, my mouth so they do not fly in. It's very gross. And instead, I take uh, my kukri and I channel my fighting power, breathe deeply, and slash as quickly as I can through the air to kill as many as possible. Roll your attack. And after this is going to be Desmond and then Finn. 23. That is enough. And you can roll your damage. Four. Oh, a six. You swing hard, Tatiana, and like you smash down on the porch again and more of the wood shatters. But you notice most of these things, even when your sword comes down on them, about half of them just w- wiggle out from under your sword and keep coming forward and start crawling up the blade towards your arm. Ah, shake blade. <laughs> Anything else from Tatiana? Uh, I, uh, I, I smack edge of blade on railing. <laughs> Excellent. That is a free action. Uh, Desmond? Desmond kind of backs up a little bit and takes the bow off of his back. And uh, he wants to, like, wrap a piece of the uh, rope that he has on the tip of his arrow. He mm-hmm. set it aflame with the tinder box because he does have a uh, an explorer's kit. I'll give you making a flaming arrow, sure. Yeah, and then just kind of like pulls back and tries to fire that flaming arrow. Go for it directly at the hole. Go for it. Rolled trash a ten. You all see Desmond's flaming arrow just whizzes past and sticks in this rotted wood. And you see the flames begin to spread across the porch and then just slowly come back down and extinguish. Like the wood, the like it's almost like the soaked waterlog wood fought back against the flames. And you hear the entire house go, mm-hmm, and the door, the front door, slams shut. Boom. Oh, I tried. Finn? Uh, Finn is a little bit freaked out, more than a little bit freaked out, and, uh, unless there's bugs close to her, she's actually, like, almost like a scared cat kind of backed up and hissing, (laughs) because she's like, oh, no, no, mm -mm, no, this, no, these are things we'll stay under the house that you don't see. (laughs) Noping out is a free action. That is true. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> she like she's literally like almost like a, an actual cat, but she's like, and then you see like fangs bared. So if anything does run up on her, she's just gonna bite it. <laughs> right. uh, you're gonna hold your action in case it attacks you. Then is what I'm hearing. Sure. If the darkness attacks me, I'll bite it back. <laughs> Perfect. You all see this uh, scattered, broken swarm all stops moving at the same time and then comes up almost like a wave over Nahara. Uh, Nahara, um, you feel these bites all over your body for five points of damage, which is not insignificant. And you also feel a burning going through. Like, they're not just biting you. These things are poisonous. Oh. And you all very much see it swarms up over Nahara, and she is screaming as these things are biting into her. Uh, Brother Uriah, you see them all over your newfound friend. Seeing someone else in danger, Brother Uriah finds his nerve. He grasps his holy symbol and shouts, Back, vermin, in the name of Ezra! as the air is filled with the sound of a dolorous bell. That'll be a wisdom, uh, DC 13 wisdom save. Uh, that's Toll the Dead. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. It, 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 no, it doesn't work like you think. It doesn't work like you think. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> They're like, oh no. Yeah, no. no, not that Toll the Dead. Yeah, um, no. I'm, uh, I'm first level. I can't turn on dead yet. So. <laughs> Other Uriah, this bell echoes out into the darkness uh, and you do damage them 
Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. I apologize for that snarf into the microphone. I was trying to mute. Didn't get there in time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that will be six points of necrotic damage to the swarm. You see almost all of them have begun dying. Even the ones that are all over Tatiana are dropping off, but Nahara, the ones that are on you are not letting go. And it is your turn. Uh, so I, I I do see that Toll the Dead has done some some damage to them. Oh yes, the 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 swarm is down to a fraction of of what it was. So I will also cast Toll the Dead. All right, roll it. in hopes that they'll get a, get off. Well, that's a wisdom. Uh, oh yes, there's a wisdom. Is a wisdom for them. Yep. Sorry. How wise are these bugs? <laughs> Surprisingly, not very. And you will hear that's that, what I was counting on. That same bell rings again. And it's like a shockwave that goes off of Nahara and echoes out through the rain even, blowing it back around her. And you hear the house again groans when this happens, but all of these bugs fall dead. Oh, Unfortunately. Yeah, won't, won't roll for it. It's, it's, they had one hit point left, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, Nahara, you are in fact poisoned which is something we will return to later, but all of you I can very- have resistance against poison damage. Recall that because it is something uh, we will come back to later. Uh, as, as these bugs fall dead off of her, you can all see the bite marks are red and inflamed and welts are already starting to rise on her skin. Um, I do have some antitoxin. I, I, I will attempt a medicine roll if that's all right. Uh, you can roll that, but now uh, this hole stands empty in Tatiana. You feel drawn by what's under there. Something is tugging at you. I say nothing. I just succumb to the pull. You all see she gets down kind of on her hands and knees and starts to squeeze into the hole. Does anybody say anything? Uh, um, you might you should be careful. Ta Tatiana. She knows what she's doing. Did you easy, see? Easy. Uh, I want to cast levitate in order to sort of like not have to crawl on the dirty ground. <laughs> it's tight under there. You could get you could get where you uh, a little bit off of it though. Yeah. Um, because there's still more of these bugs, but for the most part, they're dispersed and fleeing from what's happening. But you hear the whole house now is shaking slightly over you. Like, yeah, as I'm is you, is floating slightly above the ground. I don't really feel it as I'm trying not to touch anything, just following whatever, wherever it may lead. Because mm -hmm. I'm very much like, did you not just see? <laughs> As you get probably 10 feet underneath the house, because again, this is a sprawling gargantuan manner, but this is actually fairly close to the, to the front of it. There is a grave size rectangle of gray dust and dead bugs. And whatever is calling you is buried here, Tatiana. I just start digging with, uh, I get out my, my hand axe and I start digging with it. You all here, any of you that have dark vision can see her. She's only 10 feet in. Uh, the rest of you, it is supernaturally dark. It's like she just vanishes under there. And But you do hear digging. I see her, and despite being uh, injured, I'll, I will run in after her. Wait, I was just about to put some ointment on you. Did you does that, does that, is he able to, is Brother Uri oh. able to help oh. me with that, or...? Oh, we'll revisit the poison. <laughs> oh, should I make a medicine <laughs> right. roll now or later? Uh, save it. We'll we'll deal with it at the All time. Right. Yeah, you All you you right. have for now, I... you, you have stated yes. that you intend to try and treat her. Yeah. Okay, but I Again, head is very just much in the space. at the risk of being meta. It's because the poison takes effect when you try and take a long rest. That's why. That's oh, why I said we'll we'll I come see. back to it. Okay. Uh, what All was right. that, Valentine? My head is just like down into <laughs> the kind of hole in the uh, <laughs> porch. Uh, Nahara, you go under it, you help her dig, and after, a, it, it seems like it's going to take you a little while, and then until Nahara starts to assist you, and you hit something hard in metal that clangs when you are digging, and after a couple of moments, you reveal a very large battle axe, Tatiana. 
a huge bronze two-handed affair. Uh, have I I uh, I pull it out? Do I see anything else? Uh, no. When I touch it, do I feel anything aside from cold metal? It feels right. It feels strong. It wants to help. Huh. I wow. see truth was spoken to mistress. Uh, and I, I crawl back lights. out with it. Uh, the moment you get it out of the dirt, um, you realize everything here is awful. The house is worn. It is disheveled. It is terrible. This axe, however, is immaculate. When you just shake it slightly, the dirt falls off of it. It is gleaming and perfect. Uh, it is clearly made of an ancient craftsmanship, and yet its blade is neither nicked nor dented. It looks like it was smithed today. It's the most beautiful thing I, I ever seen. And tears well up in her eyes. Hey, Tatiana, are you good? Mistress, look. And I, I'll take one knee and offer it to her. Oh, that is lovely. It does seem like this trip is providing many gifts. Again, through the magic of technology, I will share with you all a picture of what it looks like. It is suited for a warrior like yourself, Tatiana. It oh, is wow. a large mm. double-bladed axe with a with a loop in the handle and a spike on the top, and it is an axe befitting a warrior. It does look good on you. I'm just going to uh, offer uh, Tatiana like a hand to come maybe out, though, up yeah. there. Yeah. If she wasn't already floating, she would be when she found this axe. Now, um, important point of clarification, uh, this item will require attunement, um, which I will, for the, in the interest of time, say you can do quickly if you so, so choose. Do you choose to attune to the axe? Oh, definitely. You all see Tatiana kind of like holds the axe for a second and looks down at it. In Valentine, you see a look that you're also quite familiar with. Her eyes get bloodshot, and you see the veins on her skin come up like when she's entering a rage, but she Ooh. doesn't. However, Tatiana, this just feels really, really right. And I'm going to send you separately what this is, uh, Tatiana, so you can add it to your sheet. But... She's got that look in her eye, like she's about to fly off the handle. Give it a few test swings. It's magnificent, Tatiana. It's the finest weapon you've ever held. It feels like nothing I have ever touched. It's so beautiful. It's having a strange effect on you. I feel it is right, whatever is happening. Okay. I mean, it, it, it might be cursed. You, you never know. It was found in a cursed place. I care not whether it is cursed. It is cursed for good. I can feel that. It's one thing I know. I've seen her fight. If she likes it, I support it. And I feel like it might be party time. So, uh, oh? let's get ready for more just in case. I agree. I love a party. I think you should test it out. So now you all are outside the house, which is actively creaking and groaning. And again, recall the front door had slammed shut. I have added this ax to your sheet in D&D Beyond, Tatiana. Uh, so you now have it. Uh, what would you all like to do? Uh, we, we, we must return to the Weathermay Foxgrove twins. Uh, they may be in danger. Ah, <laughs> oh, they'll be fine. One of them has a sword. I get the feeling. Or they're, they're dead, but... We should find out either way. Do we want to tell them what Tatiana found? No. I feel like no. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a large <laughs> item. It's not going to be terribly easy to hide. We will uh, tell them I have kept it outside. They cannot know. What if they try and take it from me? Look, I, 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 understand, I understand that you're not familiar with the twins' work, but I, I assure you they are good people. They have, they have helped many in their time. 
You think Other. they will not claim it because the house is for them to rid of spirits? Well, it's not their house. Yeah. Also, there is, okay. there is the okay. ancient rule of finders keepers. Losers weepers, yeah. What was that, Fen? Well, I was going to remind Brother Uriah, just because you read someone's work and admire them doesn't mean that you know them and that they're good people. It's true. I've done plenty of nice things and I'm not good people at all. Mm. Disagree, mistress. You are good people. Thank you. And I'll just kind of like Tatiana's hand. Just thank you. I would like to show to Lori. I think she will be impressed. Maybe we go try the door. Can I smash it? No. You... This is silly. yes. <laughs> well, when you, you when you try to open it, uh, it does not open. It is like the soggy wood has expanded where it's stuck in the frame. And you could try and force it open. You could smash it or you could um, um, uh, try and just like muscle it up. Like you could attack it with a weapon or you could muscle it. I want to try and uh, throw my shoulder into it. All right. Give me an athletics check. Cool. 14. Boom. It smashes open. This time... Uh, you see the foyer is still there, as you recall, but it's worse somehow now. This room is darker. Um, everything is creaking and groaning, and you see the eagle statue that was standing high on the pedestal cracks, and a creature comes crawling out of it. Um, it looks like it is... Um, almost like an eagle if it had the head of a wolf and the antlers of a deer on top of it. And it comes lunging forward towards you. Uh, I will keep the initiative like it was before. Um, so Nahara had gone last. So uh, Valentine, you see this creature shatters out of the statue and comes pouncing towards you. Uh, excellent. I would like to cast Mind Sliver. Perfect. So uh, it's not quite as like distinct of the kind of glossing over, but her eyes definitely anytime utilizing magic just go a little foggy. Um, and I'll just put a hand forward. Um, and that is um, a save from it, I believe. Yeah, it's an intelligence save. Okay. Uh, what is the number it needs to beat? That would be a 12. It does actually make the save. Well, you see the, the light crackles around its head, but it seems unfazed as it is flying mm -hmm. in the direction of all of you. Uh, anything else from Valentine? Uh, just I'll, I'll just, you know, uh, try and step a little closer to Tatiana. <laughs> Use the old move action, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Tatiana, you do see her hold her hand up and there's a flash of light that this creature seems unfazed and she does sort of step behind you and it is your turn. When your magic does not work, mine does. And I will <laughs> take this battle axe and swing it as hard as I can. Uh, go ahead, make your attack. That's an 18. Uh, that is enough to hit it. All right. Yeah, we're, oh, we're going slashing. Mm-hmm. Eight. All right. Uh, you're using it there off the sheet, right? Because it'll figure in all the bonuses, yeah? Yeah, it gave me one bonus. Perfect. It also has a D8 and D10. Do you know? Uh, it is a D8 if you use it one-handed or a D10 if you use it with two hands. It's oh, a versatile so sorry. weapon. So feel free to say, I mean, if you want to say you swung it with two hands, that's fine with me. Oh, it was definitely two-handed in my mind. All right, then yeah, it's roll your- 11. Perfect. It, you take a significant chunk out of this thing that just ah, it looks at you with like rage in its strange eyes. Uh, anything else from Tatiana? You come at my lady, you get the ax. <laughs> no. uh, uh, Desmond, you see she has rushed forward and buried this brand new axe, bathing it in the blood of her enemy, uh, but it is still flying overhead. Desmond just gets excited a little bit, <laughs> kind of pulls out. Uh, he's been holding on the two swords, so he pulls them out, unsheathes them, and kind of leaps at it. Have at it. Make your, are you attacking once or twice? 
Uh, I was hoping to, yeah, I guess it's twice because I was yeah. wanting yeah. to be like one big strike, but I mean, it's whatever. Yeah. It's easier to just click these individually. Yeah, well, the, just the way it works with the uh, two-weapon fighting, you can attack twice, you just don't get your attack bonus on the second one. Oh, I want That's the all. attack bonus. All right. So how do I roll for the attack bonus? Uh, just if you just click there in D and D Beyond, it's all figured in. Oh, Let's get I already that plus clicked it. There. Yeah, click it with the plus five. You got a twenty-two. That is enough to hit it. Perfect. So is it two D six plus three? Because it's one D six plus three per short sword. Uh, no, it is two separate attacks, two separate damage okay. rolls. Also, I dropped a picture of this thing in our chat. It is an odd creature. Uh, quite frankly, I was not familiar with it. It's a periton for those of you uh, in chat that want to Google it. A P E R Y T O N periton. This one was new to me. It's a weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two separate attacks. Mm -hmm. First is six. Uh, for damage, Second okay. Is also six. Perfect. You notice when your weapons at uh, attack it, they don't bite into it nearly as deeply as Tatiana's did. She split it thoroughly, and blood was pouring out of it. You are just knocking feathers off of it. You're damaging it. You drew blood, but not like she did. Did blood splatter across Tatiana's face? I mean, of course it did, Tatiana. Like, <laughs> it's, it's offensive. It, it, it had to. Of course yeah. it did. And it is good, Tatiana. <laughs> it is good. Uh, anything else from Desmond? No. Perfect. Uh, Finn? Yes. Um, I would like to use Blood Curse of the Marked. Excellent. What does that do? Um, Blood Curse of the Marked makes me mark a creature that I can see within 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And until the end of my turn, I can deal right damage to the target and I roll an additional Hemocraft die of damage. Perfect. Have at it. All right. So I am attacking with my longsword. Um, I do get two-handed. Um, I get a two-handed attack, but I only have one weapon. Okay. So. Yeah, well, I mean, longsword's versatile. You can swing it two-handed. I could. Mm-hmm. That is a net 20 on my first hey. attack. Hey. Roll it. So that's a crit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? We're just going in for all the damage. I'm, yep. rolling. I'm going in two-handed, so that is a D10. Pump it up. Uh, and that is a nine. I'm reading it correctly. Perfect. So 18, 10, and it's double because it's a crit. So uh, 20 damage on that. You see this thing pulls up and it comes sort of streaking towards um, Tatiana with its claws out about to rake her. And you all see Finn unsheaths her weapon and literally cuts it in half. And the two hunks of it just hit the ground. Boom, 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 boom. However, Tatiana, make a wisdom save. Oh, no. It's never good. Uh, six? Uh, she stole your kill, Tatiana. <laughs> that cannot go unpunished. What? <laughs> I, uh, uh, as I put the, the great axe, this berserker blade down, uh, halting my momentum. I just uh, take one step to turn around and swing my foot out in such a way that it may trip Finn and she falls to the ground. As I turn and say, it is dead. Yes, oh. it was oh. attacking us. Oh, Tatiana, the axe requires vengeance. This cannot go unpunished. And you all see as she looks at you, her eyes get bloodshot and the axe begins to glow with a faint red glow. Valentine, you know she's about to, she's losing it, like she's lost it. In fact, this is different than even when you normally see her lose it. Okay, uh, do I have a chance to cast Charm Person? Uh, you can try, yep. Hey, uh, that will be a wisdom save. I'm going to say roll with disadvantage because you love Valentine, Tatiana. So you can make a disadvantage on your wisdom save. Oh, boy. Uh, all of you that have Arcana can give me an Arcana check. And you can actually roll uh, with advantage, Brother Uriah. 
Because, because uh, uh, according to the law of "I told you so." According to the law of <laughs> "I told you so," good sir. <laughs> yes. Okay, this brass die is my new favorite. It's a net twenty on Arcana. Oh, nice. Noise. Twenty-four. I only rolled a ten. Perfect. Well, first, net twenty. Net 20. Another net twenty. Um, but well, well, let's resolve that first, and then we will resolve whether or not the charm person goes off. Uh, Finn and Brother Uriah, it is as you feared, Brother Uriah. Yes, this weapon is a cursed berserker's axe, and she will keep fighting as long as she can see anyone. If she can see a target, she's going to keep fighting, and she won't calm down until there's nothing in range. Blind her sight! Her, her vision is movement-based! <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, give me wisdom with disadvantage, Tatiana. Mm. That's going to be a 15. With disadvantage? With disadvantage. Mm -mm. She, you, you know, again, Valentine, it, you know, Tatiana, all this time you've been working to protect Valentine. Maybe she hasn't been your friend after all. Maybe she just doesn't care if you die or not. Maybe she doesn't care about your glory after you deal with this elf. Maybe she's next. But all of you heard him say, bind her sight. And presumably, I will just say Finn and Uriah share that she won't stop fighting as long as she can see anybody. Uh, however, we'll stay, we'll stay in initiative for this, but we're back around to the top. Um, and in the order in which we went, Brother Uriah, it would be your turn. Okay. But she's actively Ooh. stalking towards Finn with the axe. This is this is an old trick, but hopefully it's a good one. I cast light on her eyeballs. That is an old trick, sir. That is an old <laughs> trick. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is, a, that is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Uh, hmm. How do? Let's see. I gotta. I have to give her a save if you're gonna do it on her. Mm -hmm. um, I bet my DC is thirteen. I'm just figuring out what's the attribute I'm gonna give to make. You know what? I'm kind. We'll make it intelligence. Make an intelligence save, Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> kind. Is that what you call it, Dave? She's a barbarian. That's me being kind. I could have made it a con save. <laughs> it's a 13. You What's make it. Oh, no. Yep. You see? <laughs> she looks at you and just the red in her eyes glows brighter as she's stalking forward uh, with this axe. I'll try uh, again next time. She is lit up, but she can see. Uh, okay, that is going to be... Uh, no, last time I had uh, Nahar and Valentine were acting simultaneously, but this time I'm going to give it to you first, Valentine. You, oh. know what, you know what she's capable of with that weapon. And they have said that it, if she sees you, she's she she won't stop fighting if she can see you. Okay, great. Uh, well then, um, is there anything nearby like drapes or something in oh, yes. this place? Oh, I'm yes. gonna see if I can rip down some drapes and just like a like a bird <laughs> in a bird cage, just <laughs> throw it over her. I know like, I'm not strong enough to actually like bind her with it. Like something to just. <laughs> Capturing a crocodile. Uh, yeah. However, somewhere in the back of your mind, you still don't really want to hurt her, Tatiana. So I'm going to give you um, athletics to try and put it over her, Valentine, and I'm going to give you athletics at disadvantage to fight back, Tatiana. With no that 20. <sighs> you well, roll need it. it. Roll it anyway, yeah, because she, <laughs> might, she <laughs> might get one too. This is unfair. This is not fair. I got two nat 20s. So no. it's 24 with disadvantage. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? I'm, I, it's wow. not my fault. It's, it was D&D &D Beyond. B Dave, you, you let you, me kill her <laughs> on day one? You see she it's throws crazy. this tarp over her and throws it off and the entire house goes. <laughs> <laughs> the walls vibrate with happiness here and you hear fools you won't even make it to me she will kill you for me <laughs> nahara you see valentine it's seamless she throws it over her flawlessly and tatiana just rips it off of her 
and continues walking towards Finn. What would you like to do? Huh. Um, okay. I, how, how close is Finn to me? You all kind of just came through the door and the fight broke out. And um, I'd say Finn was ahead of you because she, she did kill the, the Periton. And then mm -hmm. Tatiana kind of freaked out. So she's right there in front of you. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to cast Arms of Hadar on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, just who, so whoever is within 10 feet of me will uh, take necrotic damage. But as a bonus action, oh man, do I want to do this now? I think I got to have to do this now. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on a form of dread transformation. Mm -hmm. And so what everybody sees right now is that usually the my eyes that are very bright and, and white, uh, just a haze of black smoke comes across all of it. And my flesh loses all forms of like, uh, of life to it. And I become very pale and my wings that were very like black and feathery are now spectral and skeletal. Um, so I will gain some, uh, some temporary hit points, but then I'm holding. So if, if anybody tries to attack me, i.e. Tatiana, they'll have to make a wisdom saving throw. Perfect. You all see this grim transformation overtake Nahara here. Um, however, uh, that does make it Tatiana's turn. I pivot from Finn to Valentine to Uriah, who tried to blind me, back to Valentine, and then I see this spectral demon, and I think my innate, um, my waking and sleeping thought is to protect Valentine, the last of our family. So when I have another target, I, I, I think that I want to go for Nahara, but I also think I go into a rage at this point. This would be the time that that would happen. Yes. Uh, however, you said it's a wisdom save to attack you? Uh, Nahara? Yes, it is. Uh, what's the wisdom save she needs to beat? 13. Roll it, Tatiana, to see if you can come forward. You all see again... Her muscles seem like they physically expand. It's like she gets larger in front of you. And like, uh, make that wisdom save. It was a four. And she steps forward and you all see it's like the darkness in this room moves forward around Nahara in between her and Tatiana. And it's like she's trying to force her way through it and can't quite seem to. So you are now... You are now frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Double check if rage gives you um, uh, some advantage against being frightened. But either way, oh. you do not attack right now. We'll come back to that. But Desmond, you, this is the scene that is playing out in front of you. Desmond is just, again, excited. And just, <laughs> he kind of looks and says, oh, it's time to party. He's been waiting for this. Like, he lives in a subtle rage. He just doesn't talk about it. Uh, he just kind of, like, focuses and just... He just starts to kind of just, just... His muscles just get bigger, and he just kind of starts to form, not fully, but a lot of woven features. And he just looks at Brother Uri and says, Oh... You were right to be a little afraid. And then he looks at Tatiana and just knowing that he shouldn't kill her, he wants to kind of go up and just push her and move her out of her path toward Finn. That's athletics, and you definitely get athletics on your uh, grapple against him while you're raging, Tatiana. However, from the next room, Desmond, you hear, Ah, he is a lycanthrope. I was correct. I was correct. It focus, sister. We are just a little busy right now. <laughs> Coming from the other room. <laughs> he kind of just looks back and says, Ha, ah, so what? Nobody cares. And then he just kind of looks back at Tatiana. I'm afraid Athletics. I get advantage on this because it's oh, yes. a strength check. 
Oh, yes. You get advantage of, well, y'all in your athletics to, to oppose it while you're raging. But, yep, athletics versus athletics with advantage. Athletics with, a, with minus 13. Mm -hmm. 16. Oh, I didn't roll it with it. With, uh, oh, you advantage. don't. She does. When she's raging, okay, she cool. gets advantage. Yeah. Oh, well, then, Same yeah. thing. You go and you try and push her, and it's like she's made out of concrete, Desmond. Like, so much so, when you push her, she doesn't move, but the floor bows like, and cracks under her, but she does not move. And he just kind of looks at her and says, <laughs> yes, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so he's just like ready for more. All right, Finn. You see, you, she's at least temporarily taking her eyes off of you, but this is the scene that is playing out in front of you. Uh, Finn, give me a perception check. <sighs> also, I love all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Fen is a little thrown. She only got an eight. Perfect. Then uh, you, you see the scene that is before you, Fen. Um, and since she is in front of me, mm -hmm. can I, this is going to be silly, but mm -hmm. I want to jump on her back and cover her eyes. Absolutely. But same thing. It's going to be athletics versus her athletics, um, with advantage because <laughs> this is what barbarians do. Even though she's engaged with Desmond. It's okay. This is what barbarians do. You got this. You got this. <laughs> okay. I hopefully you can see this, so I'm not bullshitting. It is a nat twenty. I mean, Ooh. she got out of the last day twenty. So <laughs> hey, roll it. Tatiana. It looks like we have I the did. same dice. There it Even is. Even with advantage, I only have a nine. You jump on her and cover her eyes. In for a second, Tatiana you feel like the madness kind of starting to dissipate like a predator with no target. You feel the rage doesn't subside, but this like instinct to kill everything around you. And you hear, I'm disappointed. I expected more. And you see the door of a nearby room gets kicked open. And you all see a terrible sight standing there. It is what once was probably a knight. There is a hole driven through his armor where his heart should be. And a ghostly blue light glows within, even though you can see all the way through him. The horned helmet is broken and an unearthly blue light shines in both eyes. And in one hand, he has an axe and in the other, he has a sword. And he looks at you and he points with the blade, Tatiana, and says, You are unworthy of my axe. And he lunges for it to attack you. And I will give you no penalty for not being able to see, but he is going to come for you. Um, I do. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. going to drop when I see this this creature lunging, mm -hmm. so that she doesn't like get yeah. run. Through. So we both don't get run through. Well, in the moment you see him, Tatiana, you're like that guy can die, no problem. <laughs> uh, perfect. Um, hang on here. Let me just. There's a lot of different ways this could go. So I had to make sure I got the right stat block for who in the right place. All right. One second. Uh, what is your AC currently, Tatiana? 15. Okay. Um, uh, he comes forward and he swings with his first weapon and you block it with the axe and he looks at you and just says predictable and stabs you with the sword for 11 points of damage however it is halved because you are raging so halved to five. Ooh, okay and you all see and even though um you're certain this blow would have killed most of you it just barely penetrates into tatiana as you see just blank mindless rage come across her face and brother uriah this is the scene that you see playing out before you okay well uh, the appearance of this thing uh, yes the uriah i apologize i don't mean to interrupt you here um mm -hmm. while you witness this whole scene playing out 
in the back of your mind, you hear, call for help, child. You have allies in this place. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Uriah is... Question. Will I be, would I be able to pull the feather as a bonus action? Yes. Well, I mean, well, what do you want to do with it? You might be able to pull it as a free action. Uh, well, I want to try something first. First, I'm going to, uh, basically, as this thing steps forward, Uriah seems to be seized by a higher purpose and yells at it, Get back, foul thing! As regards the threshold, you will not pass it! And fires a guiding bolt. Perfect. Roll your attack. And is that going through? What, sorry? Are you seeing? It's... Oh, I hear you. Something wrong? I may have to roll with a physical dice. Hold on. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I see and hear you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that will be uh, 13 plus 5, 18 total. Uh, that is enough to hit him. Roll your damage. Oh, nice. Okay, so that is 12 plus 16. That is 17 points of damage. You punch a significant hole through this thing, not unlike the hole that was already driven through his chest there. And he he looks down at it. And he looks up at you and he says, mm, you are a servant of the pretender God. I think you will die first, yes. Ezra is no pretender, he says, as the thing begins to glow with this unearthly radiance. So anybody who attacks it next will get advantage. Yes, and that was how much damage on that attack, by the way? 17 total. Perfect. And then for the bonus action, having heard mm. what... Uh, that voice in his head, he pulls out the feather and just says, help! <laughs> you hear a scream echoes through the house, like a woman screaming with pain and rage and anguish. And it is the same voice that Tatiana and Nahara had heard yelling, driving the soldiers forth. And you all see manifesting there in the middle of the room is a woman in blood red chain link armor holding a long sword and she just points at this specter that is in front of you which i have sent into group chat if you all want to see him and she points at him and says dranzorg i swore on the blood of my ancestors i would see you destroyed mm. you have come to the right place then I escaped you once, I will escape you here. And it is your turn, Nahara. Uh, Nahara is still in her form of dread, thankfully. Uh, but level one warlock, so out of spell slots. But she will um, <laughs> uh, cast an Eldritch Blast on this being. I was about to say, as long as you got Eldritch Blast, you're never out of spell slots. <laughs> exactly. I, I still got those sweet, sweet cantrips. So uh, I'll fire an Eldritch Blast, which a nat 20, <gasps> total hey. 25. Um, I mean, that is more than enough. Yeah, go, go ahead and yeah. roll your attack. So the it's is it a double? Oh, so, so okay. It was, so it was a 12 damage. Yes, double, double the dice. Not, yeah, double the damage, but not the bonus. Okay, so uh, that was a 12 damage. Okay. And I, I take a cue from Brother Uriah and uh, take out the feather that I had picked up earlier. Perfect. When you do that, the knight turns and she looks at you and she just like nods slightly. And you can see her face is rotted and decrepit like her eyes are sunken in and wild like her eyes look every bit as rage filled and unhinged as Tatiana's do but she just nods slowly and she says you've come to help restore my ancestral home yes restore me to my seat 
And uh, she can't tell that I'm making eye contact with her because my eyes are blacked over, but I do not. <laughs> she goes, ah, I shall fight with you. Then I shall fight with you. Yes. The enemy of my enemy, such as it is. And you see she looks over at the warlord and she says, avert your eyes, mortals. I shall deal with him. And she looks at him and her eyes begin to glow bright blue and like ice begins to form all over her face. And he looks for a second and he actually takes a step back and begins to avert his eyes. He goes, no, no, I have not lived this long to die like this again. I will be restored. I will escape today. And he, but he is clearly moving back away from her when she does this. And she just takes a step forward and says, long have I waited. You have evaded me in these walls after I entombed your body. Next, I shall entomb your soul. And Valentine, this is the scene that is playing out before you. Okay, great. Well, uh, I would like to, as a uh, level one sorcerer, I am also out of spell slots. I would like to cast Chill Touch. Um, so I'll just kind of summon a like spectral hand of sorts that's kind of skeletal in nature and just to go up and try and like put a hand on the throat of the, the hostile creature. Chill Touch is the most poorly spelled name in this game because it is a ranged attack, even though it is Chill Touch. That Correct. Yep. Yep. Correct. So roll to attack. All right. That is a 19 to hit. That is enough to hit him. Whee! Is that necro and isn't it also necrotic damage, but not cold? Uh, yes, it's yeah. necrotic. Again. That's correct. The worst. It's, more, of, it's more chilling <laughs> than... I chill i appreciate the chill touch is neither chill nor touch correct <laughs> Discuss. Right. Right. yeah that's right. seven points of damage um you, oh, valentine mm -hmm. you see the tendrils going through him but not like you'd expect you've done this many times you know what this does mm -hmm. to flesh it did not hurt him like it should have He's injured, but not like you would have expected. Uh, I'd like to use my telepathic speech as a bonus action and yep. just, just to Tatiana and just try to be like, Tatiana, are you here? Are you with me? Valentine, it is like trying to yell through a storm, but she's in there somewhere. I'm just going to keep whispering things and I'm going to repeat memories of places that we've been in her head, kind of as other people proceed of just describing scenery, describing home, describing events that, that she would know to the best of my ability. Tatiana, you can hear her, but it's like she's at a great distance. Yeah, uh, in response, I telepathically scream! <laughs> <laughs> um, back at you. Just keep going. I'm just going to leave that kind of is it, is she's, she's screaming mentally just as much as this knight is screaming externally right now, Excellent. honestly, to tell you the truth. Perfect. Uh, I believe that brings us to Desmond, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Desmond's just in it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, Let's I think you've passed going. over me. Oh, did I? Oh, did I? Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh -oh. Tatiana gets to do a thing. I apologize. Time to do the things. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I paused for a moment as I was stabbed in the abdomen and as I put my hands up against the blood and feel it run through my fingers, I feel a, a, a joy and more rage build within me and I take the battle axe and uh, I'm going to swing it two-handed at its rightful owner or rightful could be the wrong word here. <laughs> Indeed. Um, oh, yeah. You have no desire whatsoever to give this axe back. Yes. But uh, yeah, have at it. I know Uriah would give me advantage, but I already had it from my rage. <laughs> Absolutely. I got a 16. Uh, that is enough to hit him. All right. And this is going to be plus two because of rage. Perfect. So that's going to actually be a 13. 
Perfect. You bury the X down deep into him and it like crunches and bites into his armor and he just goes <laughs> you are not worthy of that weapon the I weapon will... thinks otherwise <sighs> you will die here I will bury you in these walls sounds beautiful uh, now anything else from Tatiana uh, she just continues to scream in her head, and anyone else who might be in there will hear it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Desmond. Desmond just pulls out his short swords and just like jumps straight in with a dual strike where possible. Have at it. Roll it. Ah, and I didn't. That's supposed to be it with advantage because of the single strike. Yes. Uh, no, it's just that okay. when you, anybody can uh, multi, you don't need the feet to multi attack. You just don't get the bonuses on your second attack. Um, so yeah. So the second attack is uh, an advantage roll. Uh, it if should it, not if be it, no. if it connects. Uh, no, mm -mm, just normal. All right, cool. So I got a seventeen. Perfect. Uh, that is enough to hit him. All right. So roll an attack for both. Mm -hmm. Five on the first. Six on the second. Uh, five and six. Perfect. Same thing. Your weapons seem like they're clanging off of his armor. Um, you are getting through, but not like it's like when Tatiana swung, it's like it was like a knife through butter. She went right through. But yours is bouncing off of him and having far more difficulty penetrating. Uh, anything else from Desmond? He's just like part of him is getting pissed. But at the same mm -hmm. time, he's just like, oh, I do like a challenge. So he's just like ready for more. Perfect. Finn? Um, this may be foolish. I like where this but... is headed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since she's seen everyone else's weapons bounce off of him, mm -hmm. she's going to go for vampiric bite. Ooh, what mm -hmm. does that entail? Hmm. Um, basically, my fangs are a natural weapon, and, um, wait, is he an undead? Oh, yeah, he's quite undead, like, clearly, visibly. Like, a lot of times, I'm like, you don't know. No, there's a whole punch clear through him. There's glowing blue light in his eyes. You're 100% sure he's undead. All right, so I, I don't get anything out of it because it, there's special conditions for undead. Mm -hmm. uh, but my fang bite is a natural weapon, which counts as a simple melee weapon in which you are proficient. Mm -hmm. Add my con modifier to the attack and damage rolls when you attack with your bite. And should I hit, I get 1d4 piercing on, on, on it. All right. Roll to attack. All righty. Oh, God. What is... Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> I don't have a con bonus. So uh, I'm just going to roll a d20 and see what happens. Perfect. <sighs> Fen's luck has run out guess is that a one yeah yeah hmm. <laughs> i i break a fang off in his neck i guess you know i'm gonna do, i'm gonna say the opposite uh finn oh it works oh it works you just deeply regret what you have sunk your fangs into <laughs> uh, his horrifying undead flesh fills your mouth and you unconsciously attempt to drink as the bale fire fills your mouth and throat and it just feels like cold and it feels like death. And there's silence, Finn. And for a moment, you're alone. And you hear voices whispering from all around you. Are you lost, child? No. Do you wish to return home? Home eventually, where I was, yes. Your carnival, your home. We would be willing to save you. We would be willing to save all of you. If you would do something for us, 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 for us. No deal. It is 
is delightful that you believe you have a choice, mortal. And you're back there in the room, and the Weathermay Foxgrove sisters burst into the room, and they say, no, no, this is not yet meant to be. We have miscalculated. You are not supposed to be here yet. No, return, return hence when you can. Restore, come, rescue us here before we... And there's silence in darkness for all of you. Desmond, you hear, feel a hand shaking you on your shoulder. Yes. It is your younger brother, Armand, vigorously shaking you. Ah, <laughs> brother, everyone always joked that you would be late to your own wedding, but you cannot be late to mine, can you? Come, come, it is a glorious day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glorious, glorious. Let's, will there be wine? Of course. I was afraid that you would not return from your ranging in time. I came here last night and you were not here. When did you get back? In the middle of the night, uh, I had a couple of creatures I had issue with, but I took care of them. Mm, yes. Well, you can tell me all about it, but later, later. Oh, you need a bath. Gods, do you stink? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take a bath. Bring me a drink while I head to the restroom. No, nope. I'll, I'll, bath, I'll, bath first, then drink. This will be a great day a for our family. to ah. the room. I know I, it's going to be a great day, but I need a drink. No, I may be your younger brother, but it is I that speaks for our family, and I say bath first. And he leans in very quick. Cl cl close to you and lowers his voice and says, come brother, you must respect me on the day of my wedding or no one else will. And he just kind of like gives you a slap. And I was like, I laugh and I'm like, <laughs> I can still respect you with a drink. That's not much to ask, is it? I will have the drink brought into the bath. Please hurry along. You're going to be late. Thank you. I'll be out there as soon as possible. And that as the morning bells begin to ring here, on a glorious day back in Faerun, here in Koshmar, is a good place for us to stop. Thank Yay! you all. Give me Dave. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in and for joining us for events that I'm sure will have no bearing whatsoever on uh, the, the future. Yeah, uh, never, that husband. never bodes well. Oh. That's, yeah, they're no. going to have e e extreme bearings on everything we do. Thank you. No, no, it's it's going to be all good. It's going to be all good. Uh, um, so uh, <laughs> we uh, again, episode one of the Black Dice Society will premiere this Thursday, April first. It is not an April Fool's joke. I assure you, it is quite real. <laughs> on the official D, &D YouTube. Uh, and we are about to have to get out of here because somebody's coming up right after us. But I want to give all of you beautiful people uh, one more chance to say who you are and where they can find you. And we will come the, the opposite direction that we went last time, starting with you, Desmond. Hi, I'm DJ Knight, aka Desmond, space and sci-fi streamer here on Twitch. DJ Knight, it's, like, it's right here. See you there. <laughs> Tatiana, who is absolutely still going to wake up with a cursed axe in her possession, and a certain someone is also going to wake up poisoned. Oh Those things my. all happen. Oh yes. Uh -oh. oh yeah. Uh, oh no. The no berserker axe is, 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 is. Yeah. No. Uh huh. Uh, this this is that scene in the movie where you're like, <laughs> oh, it was such a dream. Why is this double-headed bronze axe under my pillow? <laughs> I love this axe so much. I will find a way to remove curse. And you can find Becca at the Becca Scott on all social platforms. And please check out Good Time Society on YouTube. That's my channel. Perfect. Uh, Sage, who was about to be doing a thing right after this. I certainly am. Hi, I'm Sage Ryan, and I have been Valentine tonight. Uh, I'm a streamer, content creator, and TTRPG streamer. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I'm also one of the co-founders of the Pixel Circus channel. We're a variety channel that does a bunch of really fun tabletop content. And I don't know, multi-stream, open multiple tabs for whatever's up after this. Uh, I will be playing on Failed Save uh, starting at 6 o'clock p.m. tonight. It's our D&D 5e comedy improv campaign. Perfect. Uh, Nahara? 
Hi, I'm Nora Ibrahim, aka Neurological on all the social platforms. Um, you can find me on Realmsmith, Pixel Circus, Q Times, and a bunch of other things almost every day of the week. And next, I'm going to be up on next on the ScaryCon thing for our cyberpunk game with uh, creator Mike Pondsmith. It's going to be great. Please catch us, uh, stick around for it. Um, throwing it to somebody else. Brother Uriah McCulver. Uh, you are muted, Brother Uriah McCulver. <laughs> That's been happening all night. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm Mark Mir. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Right now, I'm going off to the uh, to the uh, Rock Punch uh, Twitch to go play some Tolus, the classic adventure setting, where I'm playing another very scared creature who is remarkably like Snagglepuss. Uh, and heavens to uh, Murgatroyd. Ooh, exit, Steve ooh. Wright. <laughs> uh, so I'll be doing that. Uh, I'm also on Stitch of Fate, a podcast by night. Uh, new episodes drop every Friday. One drop today you can find that wherever you find podcasts and of course i am on cameo for all your mass effect catchphrase related needs play the legendary edition oddly enough that is the second uh snaggle put the snaggle put solution today to it's true yeah. uh and last but certainly not least finn hey i'm tiny to pass known as cypher of tea over online you met fen your drow dump your blood hunter and uh, you can find me on my channel, but Sunday you can find me over on Rivals Waterdeep. We are in season nine of official uh, D&D show. And we are their only all POC show as well. So we are running a muck and candle keep uh, that is 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Central. And then Monday before we premiere this, I'm doing a charity game for the game Hers on their channel at 2 p.m. Eastern. But follow me on Twitter because I will tweet out again and we're just gonna have fun and raise money for breast cancer. So come through, say hi, be nice. And if you're already blocked on Twitter, oh well, sucks <laughs> to be you. <laughs> uh, B. Dave Walters, this was wine because it's five o'clock somewhere and now it's five o'clock here. So there you go. Uh, and I'm about to jump over to Bard and Barbarian for Ash and Ruin, a vampire campaign after a bit of a quick change. Um, because even though this is a vampire look, it's not that vampire's look. Um, I'm all over the place. Don't even try and keep up with me. Just follow me at B. Dave Walters. And most importantly, join us Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific for episode one, when our ongoing Ravenloft adventure begins. And you can see what is next in the mist for these wonderful people. Thank you to Gary Khan. Thank you to Luke Gygax for having us. Thank you for Gary Gygax for co-creating this game we love so much. Thank you to KC for production. And we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.